Mr. Green, Mr. Green, welcome to the program, sir. I hope we can share this. When Jehovah bless you, no one can cost you. I hope they get it. You don't get it, what a shame. Say it again, born to win. Yes, I was born to win. My dear sister, perseverance, tenacity, sister Khadija Nabe. <laughs> Welcome to the program, man. You are powerful, sister. Just keep the vibes going. Yeah. It's the promised land. We will get there. Nothing comes easy. You have to persevere. Perseverance, tenacity. That's why I admire this name. Where you coined this name from, we'll talk about it one of these days. Perseverance, tenacity. Mm, 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 mm. That's hot. <laughs> Mr. Elijah Sisei. Welcome to the program. Can we share this, please? They don't get it, do they? Your time is your time. No one can stop you. Yeah. I'm walking in my path. Woo! I say, oh, win, 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 win. <laughs> I'm born to win. Yes, my sister, in the house with you. And I'm humble. And the feeling is mutual. So am I, my sister. Trust me, man. Yeah. In here is clean. All right, ladies and gentlemen, just before we get into the program, once again, I'm your host and presenter, Prince Emil Kroma. As a disclaimer, I don't own the song. I'm playing it just so we can be entertained. And I guess this, what, this is what the artist or the artist, you know, yeah, will stand for. But whilst we are waiting for a very special guest tonight, I would like to play this song again. But um, before I play it, I want to say a big, big welcome to every one of you today, the 27th on a Friday of September. That's September coming to an end. Eventually, what this means is like the year is coming to an end. And um, pretty soon we'll start hearing, you know, Yuletide Carol, good tidings of joy I bring you to you and all mankind. But for now, tonight we've got a Liberian um, social commentator and person of um, Mr. Francis Doe and um, hopefully we shall get him very very soon so we can discuss issues. We've always said that this channel, this particular channel has got depth, it's got width, 
we've invited you know your top-notch stars and one of them i've just seen them a brother brother joshua bernard hopefully he's gonna be one of the big boys very very soon and not just a big boy but for very good reasons to you know, yeah, stand up for his people mr joshua bernard welcome to the program my friend so whilst we're waiting for mr francis though um i'm gonna play the song again it's a liberian song by the way and for those of you who don't get it what it says is you were born to win regardless of who you are i repeat you were born to win i'm not saying it in a biblical way but if you do take it that way because i ain't no pastor but i mean it from the depth of my heart i repeat you were born to win what god has marked for you no one will take away just like what it says whom god has blessed you know no one will curse what god has blessed nothing will put it asunder so let's get the song again ladies and gentlemen while we're waiting for our very special guest mr francis doe yes my top striker joshua bernard so every time i see you and hear you every time i see jj and the rest of the bypass community crew i get a bit emotional yeah, because this goes deep this goes to you know yeah when we were very much young but we'll talk about it brother thanks for tuning in wish you all the best and the boys are doing well mr francis though you need to start coming online now because we got people coming online and this is um, dedicated to the people of the republic of liberia this is um dedicated to the people of the republic of liberia and we've got mr francis doe mr francis doe you cannot afford to keep your guests waiting amen so you're forced to like me even if you not let me say you're forced to let me <laughs> Very interesting. I said I jump over it. Uh, I'm looking, you know, you're quite excited tonight. But this is the show. I'm a presenter and host. You know, you just want to be lively. Right, ladies and gentlemen, um, for every beginning, there is an end. First of all, I want to take this opportunity to welcome a very special guest to this show here tonight on the 27th of September, 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. Francis. Do. Mr. Francis, do. welcome to the program, brother. Thank you, thank you. Let me see, let me take the opportunity to say thank you. Uh, let me say my uh, warm welcome to each and every one I watch. You know, let me say thank you for making uh, for hosting me tonight. I highly, highly appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Kuman. Let me say uh, me say thank you for taking the opportunity, you for giving me the opportunity tonight. Okay, and people are beginning to greet you already, Mr. Doe, and um, I know you've got fans here, and so you've got antagonists as well. In this business, not everybody agrees with you, but this is what we have to live with. And ladies and gentlemen, he is also um, a social commentator, and he lives in Canada. And I want to use this opportunity to congratulate you on your recent graduation, and I want to say welcome to this exclusive club of graduates. Right. Let me say thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me say thank you too. Thank you, I highly appreciate it. Thank you. Let me say thank you, Mr. Kuma. Let me say thank you, I highly appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, thank you. That's all right, Mr. Do. So let's get down to what we've invited our guest here to listen to. And this goes to the heart of the problem. And ladies and gentlemen, by um, virtue of um, um, a description of the subject matter, we are going to talk about um, the country, the Republic of Liberia, um, Africa's oldest. But in so doing, 
we are equally going to connect the Republic of Liberia because if we are saying that Liberia is Africa's oldest republic, which means that in the struggle of Africa and Africans, Liberia has always been in the center. Hence why we find, you know, like a symbol called the Lone Star, which when many countries were struggling, this particular star stood in the center of the struggle. And um, many countries went through um, the Republic of Liberia. When I say countries, it might be their people, but Liberia did help in the struggle. Today, ladies and gentlemen, Liberia st stands at a crossroad. In other words, if you've seen the, the topic, a country which was a proud republic, which stood in the test of times and helped most, if not all, of African nations in their struggle for independence and recognition, Today is at the crossroads of um, 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 what you will call, you know, your yeah, economic downturn. And the people who were a very proud people are now today a very struggling people. And this is just a fact by virtue of the records. But we're not going to go too deep into that because in 1847, we know that this nation was established. What we want to talk about, you know, your yeah, fast track, probably we might go a bit into reflection. And I'm sure we're going to be doing that. But lately, there has been a talk about the establishment of an economic crime court in Liberia. And this crowd is becoming louder. And our guest today, I guess, is a man who has researched widely on whether an economic crime court should be set up in Liberia. And if it should, why should it? So the question to you, Mr. Doe, in this opening is, do you believe, sir, that an economic crimes court should be set up in the Republic of Liberia? Yes. And if the answer is an emphatic yes, like you've said, okay, and I know because I'm looking at the records, that 43 of the 73 representatives in the House of Representatives in the Republic of Liberia, which is a majority out of 73, 43 have endorsed, you know, that a resolution should be established that a war and economic crimes court should be set up. In your opinion, sir, why do you think that this crime court should be set up? If it wasn't set up then, why should it be set up now? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Krumah, thank you, thank you. Let me take a time to say thank you, thank you, uh, thank you for the question. You know, the issue is uh, establishing a tribunal, the economic, uh, the economic tribunal, will serve as a deterrent and also serve as a guardian for the country. Because the, can the country right now, if you look at the, the country Liberia, let's look at the country in general. The country, the whole system in Liberia need a reform. The whole institution in the country need a reform. Because we live in a modern, we live in a modern, uh, modern day, right? Everything at this point of time moving toward a modern day system. In Liberia, everything there is still traditional, and the traditional method is doesn't work. That's why the country stay back. Up. The economic crank or what I think that the economic crank is very important for Liberia at this point of time. One. People commit economic crime in the country, they just want free, and people appreciate them. And when you look at Liberia today, a one citizen, a one single citizen, the country that people, by majority live on less than one dollar a day, a one citizen which go to work maybe five or six times a month, that is a week, taking 15,000 naira from the poor country. This guy is supposed to be a lawmaker, right? That's supposed to be a representative that represents these pe uh, people, uh, such a people that's all working in interest, that's all make a law, that's all reflect on the press, on the people in the country. They may take him 15,000 naira. Then the same country, a police officer in the country, a police officer, an immigration officer in the country, taking less than 200 dollar home in the same country. So that's, that's alone is an economic crime. Because if you have an economic crime court, we will investigate those people on we grind that you pay the police officer uh, $200, then you pay you pay yourself $15,000. That look at a lot of morality. That look at common sense. Why would you pay the guy that go to work? 
and work from nine o'clock in the morning, you work four hours share, you pay him two hundred dollars, and you that only go work for three hours, you get paid fifteen thousand dollars. Tell me, tell me the function and the discretion of your job. And those other people, because the economic crunch uh, address all the issues, the, in, uh, the, in, the, in, the income inequality, inequality, right? We want to revamp the system. The economic crunch will just be the starting point of the revamping the system, the whole system. We want to revamp the whole government, the governance system in Liberia. So, um, uh, Mr. Doe, um, that, that's quite interesting. So we're talking about the significance on why an economic crime court should be established in the Republic of Liberia. But we also yeah. have to bear in mind that um, the nation is fragile. The nation came from um, a, a, um, a, a sort of nasty sort of um, civil, um, um, not civil, but tribal conflict in which, that's, that was my introduction, in which a once proud nation, a nation whom at the height or the peak of the, 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 the establishment was receiving over half a billion dollar for a three million population, that's back in the 1980s, shortly before Master Sergeant Samuel Kayondo took over government. So every sector of the Liberian economy was sort of um, vamping. Vamping, I mean, was functioning on every cylinder. And there was so much excess that people from the outside could go into this great country and was able to survive out of it. But moving forward to the now, based on what we are talking about now, yes, according to you, there needs to be an economic crimes court. But if this, because that was the premise of my question, if this was not addressed then, why is it now? Why is it, why was it not addressed under Madam Ellen Johnson Sullif, if we should bring it to the recent? Why is it now just being, you know, put under pressure under the administration of um, President His Excellency George Opong uh, First of all, the economic grant court you not set it in a bad faith. The economic grant court is we is not establishing because of the we are government. It's not establishing a bad faith. The economic grant court will have a will go back because the court will start investigation. Then the court will go have a discovery, the, the period of discovery, when the crime will commit it. We will go back because the economic grant court will go back and read because this is a court, right? This is a tribunal, right? We talk about court, you can go back to the 60 and bring what happened in the 60. Depend if you have evidence to prove what happened in the 60. Depend. So, so we're talking about court that will address the nation. We're talking about court that will be established for anybody that go against the state, that loot the state resources. It's not for Jawia. It could be established in Manasori. It could be established in Manasori time, but it's established in Manasori time, established in Jawia time. It will still get the same result. It doesn't matter the period of time is happening. But we all we need, because the court is not established for Jawia. If Jawia commit crime, you're going to go to, to the court. If any Liberian citizen are commit crime against the state, that loot the state resources, a vast majority of our people are dying, the president will go at the court, will go address itself to the court. Right, Mr. Doe. I mean, that's a critical point you make there, but I still want to ask the question. Because looking at the crisis that happened in Liberia many years ago, probably 20, 25 years ago, that brought the war to an end, there have been several governments, okay, including that of Madam Ellen Johnson Sullivan. The reason why I ask, if action of this nature, I'm not saying that the action should not be taken, because it sounds like an absolute necessity. But sometimes in the buildup, you know, yeah, to peace, in other words, peace resolution, conflict resolution, and you're building up on a fragile peace in which the very players, the people that are the components of a government today or the system of governance are the very people that most likely you will be advocating to bring to justice. How then do you think, if this is the case, how then do you think such, um, such a structure will function in which the very people who are the component of government 
are the ones who were yesterday, are the ones who are today, and therefore they stand accused. Uh, Mr. Kromad, which is very important, thank you for the question. The issue, the, that's what I'm saying, the court is neutral. The tribunal is neutral. The tribunal doesn't know whether you take part in the government yesterday, they take part in the government yesterday. Yes, day before yesterday, the government will quote the tribunal will question you the time you were serving the government. What was your what was the role you play and the phone we gave you the phone the government gave you? How did you manage the phone? Regardless, you are working. Ellen Johnson, we know Ellen Johnson said he not establish a court because she herself was involved to the massive looting of the country, the state resources. So for now, we don't really care. This is a revolution. In a revolution, they don't really care. As a patriot, you don't really care who is going to affect. If my brother was working in the government, my brother loot the state. If my brother go to the state, loot the state resources and use it for his own personal gain. My brother to be prosecuted. If my mother was in the government, my mother to be questioned. The government gave you five dollars. What did you do with the government five dollars? Produce a receipt. If my mother owed the government, my mother should be able to pay the government, and the government should take a legal step against my mother. That would serve as a deterrent. We're running a country. We don't run it. This is not a traditional crop. That's why we're trying to move away. If it, because this is the mindset of people who go to the country, they go and do something. They say they're passing from the tribe. And the constitution of the country, the constitution is the supreme law of the country. The constitution should be implemented. The constitution is not by tribe. So it doesn't matter. The tribunal is what I'm going to do. do. Joe, we are anybody that commit crime, the person should be able to address itself. That's what we're trying to establish the court. Brilliant, Mr. Mr. Doe. But this is the point. At the end of the war, the Liberian people came together and they organized something that we now know to be the TRC which is the Truth and Recon Reconciliation Committee, which was modeled out of the South African model, which is, we agree and accept that crimes have been committed, but owing to the kind of crimes that have been committed and in the interest of nation building and peace, certain things will have to be overlooked. Certain things will have to be forgiven. We can forgive, although we will not forget. But if we say we want to pursue some things like trying to set the record straight, whereas like typical example, this was a tribal war in which the entire nation, okay, was engulfed in this war, that many people did many other people wrongs. If we say we want to write this in a small nation of, by then the population was like um, 3 million to 3.5 million, I believe in which over a quarter of a million people, Liberian people, including foreigners, lost their lives. That's almost 300,000 people. And that's um, a conventional estimate could have been very, very much higher. So they decided that we're not gonna pursue this on this level. What we will then do is the South African model. We try to reconcile the issue between ourselves and then we will find a way of going forward. This issue of now calling for an economic crime, which goes back to the heart of the matter, Mr. Doe, don't you think that this will dismantle the very fragile fra uh, uh, structure that the Liberian system, the establishment, is standing upon? But, 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 uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kruma, let me give you a story, right? I grew sure. up with my grand... Let me give you a story about my grandmother. I grew up with my grandmother... At the time I was young, I grew up with my grandmother. My grandmother loved me to the extent that she loved me. She used to do everything for me, right? But the certain thing I would yeah. do in the house, my grandmother had to discipline me so that next time, so the next person could not follow my poster regarding my grandmother loved me. You get, you get what I'm trying to say? Right now, yeah, if you don't have an yeah. economic plan code in the country, it will be a mission that people will come in the system to say, oh, the other guy loot the country and we go and just such a way we let them go. The folks are riding luxury car, they live in luxury life. How do we going to run a government if we're going to forget people? We can't compromise the constitution of the country because we just for a flat job war. It doesn't matter. The constitution is 
during a period of war, the Constitution was still functioning. We're talking about Constitution. We can't, consult, we can't compromise the Constitution because of the sake of peace. Now other people will be doing it, then we'll, start, we'll keep on compromising the Constitution for the sake of peace until the country will go to a war. The country will go back to a civil war because the next guy will come and loot the country. You say, oh, during early time, what happened? We forgave them. Then after Joe, we are trying, another person will come and do it again. It's not the way we want to run the country. We want to run the country on the basis of constitution, on the basis of principle. We say the principle is the, the, the constitution is the principle of the country. So we want to enforce the principle of the country. The constitution doesn't, the constitution know that all those things, when the time they were driving the constitution, they know all the implications, but they still drop the constitution to hold people accountable for the action. Okay, um, fair point. Um, just to read a um, few comments. Do um, um, Sister Elizabeth um, Pecatia, I hope I pronounced your name right. You are right, Mr. Du. We need the War and Economic Crimes Court to strengthen our justice system. And John Fala, John Fala says, okay, he's watching live from Minneapolis. And good day to you, Mr. Du. Okay. And uh, Mr. Nathan, Nathan Bernard, Liberia advocated for the independence of the rest of Africa, countries when they were under colonial, of course. That's, that's very true, Mr. Bernard. And one final thought on Ms., uh, Madam Elizabeth Picatier. The War and Economic Crimes Court implementation involves the international law which makes it a little bit more complicated, but um, of course we get down to that. So my next question to you, Mr. Do is, you know, when the TRC that I just spoke of earlier on, I do agree with you, by the way, that um, should we forego this situation right now as it is, the next administration in the interest of peace, I suppose, will have to do the same thing and it's going to be like on and on and on. And then the Liberian people who are the actual victims of all what has been going on for the last three decades will continue to be the victims. So at some point, justice has to be sought. But here is the question, Mr. Doe. When the TRC was um, organized and all those that faced the TRC, of course, there was a report. But largely, those that faced the TRC were based on reconciliation. Are you now saying that those who faced the TRC, if they were guilty of economic crimes against the Liberian people, should the case be that an economic crime court will be organized? Should these people face the organized um, economic crimes court backed by the international community? Yes, yes which is I believe it because uh, this is a law. I believe in a law. I don't believe in, because there's a the law that will serve as a deterrent. We want to, we want to, we want a nation build, we want to build a nation where we'll stand on the principle of law. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, that was quite a short answer, but straight to the point. So, um, you know, the country has suffered quite, quite a lot. There is the rise in crime, in violence. You find mob executions. These are not nice things to say, but we're not making these things up. These are facts. You find like illicit drug, which is a culture of um, the youths. And this goes back to the days of the war. These are all products of the war. You think when an economic crime court, hopefully shall be set up, which will address economic issues, the issues related to what I've just spoken of, which is the rise of violence, mob executions, the use of illicit drugs by the youths who are meant to run the country tomorrow. This is going to change the dynamics, Mr. Doe. Do you think so? Yeah, but that's why we want to establish the economic crime court. Because when you have the economic crime court, you have the economic, you will have the, the economic crime court will work with other crew uh, cook around the world. No money that those people lose from the country. The important of the economic crime court, let me tell you the benefit of the economic crime court. Those people that use the state resources for their own gain, no money will be retreated and bring back to the country so we can have more training, vocational 
institution in the country so we can keep the youth busy. But if you have all those people, like if you have more than one person taking 20,000, 15,000 a month, what vast majority of the poor in the country tell me, how do you disbody the income in the country? How do the, the poor benefit one person taking 15,000 a month? If it's the police officer, the only time, because if we bring the, if we have an economic crime code, then we'll re revamp the system, the whole government system. The police officer in the country should be making at least $500 for the police officer can be active to work because the security of the country, if it's security that happy, they will do, they will, they will do more. They are happy, they respect uh, the treat that the, the citizen will give them respect, but the citizen, the police, the police have no car. The police have no, the police have the drug maker in the country. The, the, the security is, is unable to run. They are running the country on a manageable. How can you manage a country? The resources is there. You manage it. Then you give you take a resource and give it to few people. The government, if you are represented by forty thousand naira, I think that forty thousand naira. We take we should take that forty thousand naira and go to Toyota garage to give more car to the police. Because in case somebody called uh, that, in case somebody report a crime, the police should be able to respond that immediately. But giving a lawmaker a 15, uh, 20, 40,000 out of car, it might have to go to work one or two times after for what you park it. But if you get a policeman, you buy a car for the policeman, you use that car, you buy 10 car for the policeman, the car will be running constantly. Yeah, Mr. Then no. second, yeah. yeah, go on, go on, please, go on. Then second, the gas that you give it to the lawmaker, take that gas and give it to the police. Because the police need more gas to run because the police fighting crime. The police have to use the car. Technically, the car had to run 24 hours. The police need more logistics. But why are you giving a, a lawmaker almost 200, 500 gas lit? Then the police officer in the country, the police doesn't have a car. The police doesn't have a gas. So what do, what happened? The crime rate will the crime rate will increase because the police cannot the government the government not paying attention to the, the poor that you pay attention to because if you don't pay the policeman you don't put it, you don't pay the immigration man good money uh Mr. Wait, Mr. Kuma the man not gonna work how the police gonna function right now you call the policeman to come do the duty the police man don't have a car how do you expect the police man to get to your location there will be increase of crime so that's why you're saying the money which you have the economic crime code so we can revamp the system so the people, the money can be allocated to the proper people. So the people, equal work, people that do the job to get paid for what they're doing. The policeman should ever leave. The policeman should make $500 a month. $500 a month. That would be a least, that would be better. I'm not saying the, the, the minimum, the starting police officer should make $500 a month in my country. I think my country have the money to do that for the for the security, uh, for the security, uh, for the police officer in my country. Okay, I think you make quite a critical point there. And let me just read quickly another remark from Sister Edith Wallace. There were recommendations that came out of the TRC, which is the Truth and Reconciliation Community, I mean committee, which still need to be implemented. So there were things that were recommended that were not been or are not being implemented. Can these be re uh, revisited? She's asking for this to be revisited. But you make quite an important point in terms of um, disbursement and how it sounds like um, or it looks like it's so one-sided in which the people who make the law, they seem to be getting the bulk of, you know, yeah, the spoils of government, whereas those that are supposed to execute the law i.e. the police are getting far less. So therefore, the people are not getting the benefit, Mr. Do, And that's quite a very, very important point because we'll talk about the rise in crime, for example. If the police should be effective, the police has to be given the logistics to execute their remit, which I think that's the point that you are making. But let me ask you this, Mr. Mr. Do, okay? Um, there is massive corruption in the country, and this is what you are trying to speak to. There's massive corruption in the country. The people who are supposed to benefit, in other words, for the wealth of the Republic of Liberia, to trickle down to the people, instead is trickling up to a few people. But the president, does this give you, or do you believe this, 
The President of the Republic, His Excellency George Opong Mane Weir, has actually endorsed, according to my understanding, the establishment of this crime court, the Economic Crime Court. He said that he would like to see something like that. First of all, because leadership has to be provided in what you are saying. Do you believe that the president is really interested in providing or supporting an economic crime court? Do you believe that Mr. Weir is, um, uh, is advocating truthfully no. the endorsement no. and establishment of a crime court? No. no. So why do you say no, Mr. Doe? Why do you say no? Because Mr. Doe, I mean, Mr. Um, Weir is on record for saying that yes, he would like to see the establishment of an economics, um, economic rather crime code. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Kruman. You know, a job we are interested in a code, right? First of all, this guy, how can you establish a war crime code? Uh, the economic record. When you, the same government, the same government you accuse of economic crime, you could not order the government. Um, don't forget about economic, uh, don't forget about economic crime. But you could not audit. If you come to my office, before you take over, you order the office to know what is happening in the office, right? You can't just come and sit in a night. Maybe be a cause of trouble or what is happening. You don't know where the office starts. You don't know where it ends. So I don't really believe this thing is a political game. So it is a political game that you're saying, okay? So again, you have to break that down. But just before I, I give you the microphone again, Mr. George Sikpa, has just made a contribution which I would like to be broken down because we're expecting people to kind of participate. I'm going to supply a number soon. Probably people want to call because I can see a lot of people want to contribute, but I can't bring them on because that will imply that I will lose you. So I'm going to provide a number soon that they can call so they can participate, ask you questions or make or form their opinions. So Mr. George Sikpa said, will the ECC determine how much people stroke salary people will make or hold people who stole state resources accountable. Do you have an idea what the ECC is, Mr. Mr. Doe? The economic crime court, there's a two component. When I talk about salary, when I talk about salary restructure, this, this is a tribunal. The tribunal is there to investigate people that lose the state resources. When I, you listen to me, I say we want to revamp the tribunal is just a starting or revamping the whole governance structure. Because what we want to do is make sure after establishing the, the economic crime court, then we will go back to the salary. We will go back to the salary. We will structure the salary. We will have a salary structure. Because in this country... When, 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 when you say what we want to do... Mm -hmm. What do you mean by we? Because if we you understand a, we, it's the plural form. Yeah, go on, please. We as a citizen. Okay, thank you for clarification. Oh, the economic crime code, the citizen, the citizen are advocating for the economic crime code to be established because the economic crime code is the economic police that will monitor. Because if you commit a crime, the court will determine what, I, what to do with our money, what to compensate the property, the, the, because the court is actually the master resource, the court is actually the savior of the country at this point of time, because which means the economy is not falling short on certain spending. But right now, you cannot have a go you cannot have a salary, in you cannot even say have a this the data for system in the country when people were just were certain. Uh, certain people, uh, certain person will just take a massive chunk of the money and just keep it for themselves. First of all, if you tell the policeman to make five hundred dollars, then two uh, fifty million, twenty five million, still getting out of the country state cover. How do you retrieve that money back? And even say you set a salary for the police, how do you how do you meet up with it with a demand? No. 
So those are two different components. The court is different. The court is just there to investigate and bring back what belongs to the country. And the salary structure will have something they call WCB. What the court will, will be a, a certain component of the, the court. Let's say work, if you work, let's say, for example, the worker compensation board. What the court will be responsible to make sure and enforce it, if you commit a crime against the worker, they can also go and sue you. Then the court can also be what? Because right now, there's no system in the country that if somebody, let's say, for example, if you don't pay equal, you cannot go nowhere to get a redress. But if somebody, if you have a tribunal in the country, let's say if you, you are a lawyer, there will be a salary structure. If you are a lawyer, you should be a certain amount. If you are a doctor, you should be a certain amount. They should be paid by what? By your qualification. But in the country, they don't, all the things is not, not settled. People are just getting paid in the country by pay, pay value. No. We want to have a system that will be respected by that profession. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. Doe, that sounds like a reasonable and plausible argument. But in issues of this nature, there has to be political will. Hence why my last question. Because if the presidency of George Weah does not try to push these things that you are advocating for, it's obviously going to be like previously before Mr. Weah. So how do you think this, how do you think that these issues that you are advocating for will be solved? Because there seems to be a massive disparity. There seems to be an issue of injustice. There seems to be an uh, issue of economic disparity, the wide gap between the haves and the have nots. Yeah. And this is unfair. And I believe this is the argument that you're trying to make here tonight. But yeah. in the absence of a political will, Mr. Abdul, what would you advise, you know, your others that are listening, like-minded people who does not know what to really do or how some compromise can be reached? Because you are making a good point. But how do we get to what you're trying to say? Uh, before I answer the question, let me say something, right? This sure. is very important. What I about to tell you, Mr. Kuma, you know, during sure. early time, because of the issue wasn't addressed, now it's very difficult for Joe to address because now you listen to Absolutely. everybody. When you listen, people always have been saying that, oh, why doing the government? He never addressed the government. Why doing the government? He, had, he never addressed. So now it's not a political will. The political will of Joe could matter. But we want the will of the citizens to prevail because the power is invested in the people. And the, pre the president work for the people, and the president should be able to meet the demand of these people. So we want those things to start. So the next government I will, come, will not say, oh, doing job we are trying. Why you people never established doing job we are trying? So the thing will continue, continue to say, we make doing early time was a mistake. We believe that it was a mistake, that that never happened. But we don't want to continue making a mistake. So we wanted to start right now, because at that point of time, in the country, what's happening in the country is not corruption now. It's looting. People are taking advantage over the system. And when you are, they say doing early time happy. What really happy? We want to put stop to those things. We want to put stop to it now so that those things co doesn't continue. Because if, 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 if we were to put stop to it doing early time, those, the government will come to be one of the serial government because they will come to see the type of mission that we take. But at this point of time, we make a mistake at that point of time. But at this time, we want the way of the people to prevail. And the way of the people, the people in letter job, we are the power, the investor, the power into the presidency. But the power is also investor in the people at the end of, any point of time. We gather your political will. But the poor way to prevail. That's what we want to do. Now, let me, let me shift gears a little bit from one to two or even, you know, yeah, into three on the same subject matter because there is something very critical in terms of what we are talking about here tonight. And this is, um, I like to call it geopolitics because once it cross borders, it becomes, you know, yeah, another people's politics and how do you twin the politics to talk about one single politics even though it involves two or more sides. Um, you know, just on the, I believe is the northern side, I'm not very good with the geography, but 
The country, Sierra Leone, is bordered by Liberia, or Liberia is bordered by the country, Sierra Leone, from that end of things on the compass. And then Conakry, Guinea is on the other side. What I've learned, you know, yeah, for the last 30 years is how these three countries are kind of intertwined economically, culturally, socially, and politically. So in other words, what happens in one country has an effect. All of the effects are not similarly measured, but it definitely does have an effect. Because for one thing that we know for sure is these countries, they all do have a common trade center. That's why we, if you go back to the late 1970s under the administration of William R. Tober and then Samuel, the late Samuel Kayondo, there was massive trading between these countries. Zimi, for example, and then the other side, Konakri, Guinea. Trade were going up and down. People are intermarriage. Currency was being used in the immediate borders of this country. Trucks, ferries, boats were upgoing and oncoming between um, all other countries. Market produce, um, agriculture products were being sold between these two countries. So somehow these countries are kind of intertwined culturally, economically, politically, and you name it. So therefore, one problem in one country, depending on the magnitude of the problem, Mr. Doe, will have an effect on the other side. What we are saying here, we're talking about economic crimes and setting up a court, which obviously will have an effect on the other side. How do you think the other countries will look at what we are talking about, even though there's an example to be drawn here, but in the wider scope of things, how do you think the other countries will be seeing this? Uh, first of all, we have a Mano River Union. We have a Mano River Union where we share, like, technically we respond to share security, tree, and et cetera, et cetera, so we can have the same agenda. But if you look at the Mano River Union right now, the Mano River Union is dysfunctional. Because if you have Liberia, Australia, and Guinea, sure. and one of the membership yeah. is falling apart economically and politically, which means technically the union have a problem because it's a union as opposed to this is one of their members. So what I'm trying to say is time for the government of Australia to look at the, the, the two uh, border, the two bordering uh, country, Sierra Leone, Guinea. It's time for the government to read to address those issues because if you look at the economic situation in Liberia, it's not stable. It could lead to a conflict. And we, we look at the result before. When there were conflict in Liberia, you look at the end of the day, it's Qatar in Sierra Leone, uh, Guinea, all of you could taste this thing. And it's only time right now for the Sierra Leone government to look at the issue and say this is the issue of Liberia. No, there should be a situation of the Mano River Union because it's the responsibility of the Mano River Union. If one of their members is struggling, it's a responsibility to address the issue. It's time for them to look at it in a logical conclusion and look at the government. It says this is what you can do to stabilize the peace in the country because the economic crackle in the country will stabilize the peace in the country as long as the citizens are benefiting from what they're supposed to benefit. What bringing conflict in the country is because the citizens are not benefiting from what belongs to them. What belongs to the citizens is just getting divided by a few groups of people, which is just saying to any society, injustice in that society is not a functioning society. So the Man of River Union, the president of those very countries, it's time for them to look at the president of our country and call the president and look at the greater good of all for the three countries, the greater good of all, the security implication. We're talking about economic because the economic situation in Liberia may lead up, it may lead to another civil unrest in the country. Then the, the, the Man of River Union had to deal with it, the situation again. It may, because right now, Sierra Leone is building a, a, a economy, an economy that really, like you're building the future. But building the future, the neighboring country is also fragile. It's happened before, and you get a same result. It's time for the government, the both government, to intervene and curtail the issue before it gets let. Because if they look at it to be a Liberia problem right now, 
It happened before. Do it those times, it will have a problem. But at the end of the day, the inflow of refugees from our country, because of the economic tough times, some of them will start going to the country. And all the drugs he's talking about, eventually, after some time, it will start happening to Sierra Leone. It will start extending. So it's time for the both, the both countries to address the issue before it got late. So the, the country cannot say it's a Liberia problem. It, it's part of the union, and it's time for the union to look at the issue and look at it from an economic uh, standpoint, from a security standpoint, from also a trade standpoint, because if Liberia is not doing good, the union is not doing good. If you build, I don't really care how much education system you build in Sierra Leone, if the war in Liberia, it's still technically for that same idea, for that same mindset to shift in Sierra, in Sierra Leone. Is that you have political instability in Liberia? It's still because people look at it, right? A behavior is still going to cause a same border. I think if the government of Sierra Leone, the union, the union want to build a stable society, they should rebound the union and they should look at collective, they should look at it in a collective perspective that every citizen should be participated. If they should not be that one, one other citizen have a problem, you say this is that problem, let it address it. I think that's what the union should be there for. The, at this point of time, economically and security wise, the union need to come to Liberia A right now because what is happening in the country, the country just in the bring another civil war, which means the union have to deal with all those things. Okay, Mr. Mr. Do, uh, uh, I'm not sure how many people will agree with you on that. You know, you're on the brink of a civil war. Because what lessons has taught, you know, yeah, mankind is once they've seen a set, you, you, you know, on social media, there's a lot of talk about as if there's going to be war tomorrow. But if you should do um, um, an in-depth analysis, you know, yeah, and conduct a poll, you'll find out that the most people that are advocating for war are people who actually did not physically saw the war. Because once you saw a war once, Except you are battle hardened and you profited wholly from the war, which is always in the minority, a lot of people suffered as a consequence of war. So they've got no appetite um, for war, Mr. Doe. But here is the thing I think you made a, a brilliant point because both countries have to be on par, they have to be on level. Development don't have to be equally carried out at the same time. But for one side to be down and another side up, or juxtapose that the other side is up and the other side is down, it doesn't bode well because they share a porous border, they share many things in common. So if anything should happen, the other side will bear the consequence as well. So even like you said, which I agree with you, one side is developing economically, but because the other side is not gaining that same kind of momentum, should things turn around, the other side will become a victim, regardless of which country. But this is my question to you, um, Mr. Doe. The corruption that we are talking about is not today's thing. It existed under the True Week Party, TWP. Sorry for me taking you all the way back. It existed under the government of um, the late Samuel Doe. He existed under all subsequent government, be it Pomapo, be it Ruth Perry, be it um, Charles Taylor, be it um, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, and now George Weir. Would you agree with that, Mr. Do? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that's a that's a that's a fair take. But the corruption, part of the corruption that we are experiencing, we do agree that there are individuals establishments within the establishment who are very, very corrupt. But part of the corrupt streak that we are facing now as a nation, as a people, as part of the international community or a region, has something to do with the international slump in the market, recession in the market, um, and um, the dollar losing its value, which is the basic commodity you know, yeah, for uh, trading. Commodities that will sell, either losing their values or there are less demands for it. So we are struggling. So this is all part of the corrupt um, things that we are talking about, which is not working because we're not getting what we used to get before and people are still taken out of the system. 
Do you think that would be a good characterization of the corruption thing that is ongoing, sir? No. You know, uh, you see in Liberia, Liberia is a donor bay driven economy, right? What are they? So are, many, so are many African countries, including Sierra Leone, which borders Liberia. But carry on, carry on, sir. Carry on with what you're saying. Liberia is a donor bay driven economy. And Liberia, being a donor bay driven economy, Liberia, second, uh, the, the global market has nothing to do with Liberia uh, economy, though. I don't really think that the global market, because Liberia has nothing in the market, not that like the rubber, the cocoa, is those things I just feel like things that don't really, really matter, that don't really matter to the country, though. So when I look at people saying the global market, the world market, the market has nothing to do with the country. In general, the people in the country, the king in the country, they have a different intention. Their intention is not to manage what they have in the country, just to come and loot the country, the state resources. That's all they do. And you can see it. Liberia is a country that somebody uh, in the government would take $25 million, $25 million for the country cover and carry and go do the mop up exercise into the ghetto. So I don't really believe that telling, telling us that the, the global market, the commodity price, they want. No. Each other economy, the guys are depreciating, uh, those guys are depreciating the country. First of all, the country doesn't have a starter. The country has no money in the country in the central bank. So how do you first of all talk about the economy? The country has no, the first of all, the started for the country, the people that use all this money. So I don't really think that it's a so cool man. Yeah, go on, please, go on, go on. No, what I was saying, let me repeat that, uh, Mr. Kuma. Liberia is a donor driven economy, right? What hurting Liberia right now? The donor funding our in the country cover, the people are taking a mismanagement. Mismanagement is the one that's driving the country right now, doing any type of corruption. But doing the time is mismanagement. The difference between mismanagement and corruption, though. What's happening in the country right now is not corruption, it's mismanagement. They guy, those guys are mismanaging the state cover. That's what affecting the country. And people doesn't trust the country no more because government is an institution who has to try to do business with you. The poor don't trust you, people don't want to do business with you. The country, the government, and I go to the, the donor account and taking money from the donor cover. Not giving the donor, trying to tell the donor, say, look, you're helping us. You came and helped me. I'm stealing from you. I'm taking from you. That is that you, Mr. Kuma. Will you help me again? You came to help me. What you brought to help me? I stole it behind you. Will you help me again? No. That's what is happening in the country. So it has nothing to do with the commodity price, the global market. No, it's just mismanaging and disrespecting the system. This is what happened in the country. Those guys are disrespecting the system. The system was there, the king of metal system, they broken down the system. Liberia is a country that the sitting, the sitting justice, associate justice, which is Kapina Jenner, were impinged because of his opinion. That's why you're trying to say that the whole justice system needs to be revamped. It's a country that when you right now, if you don't have money, you don't have a justice. That people just compromise the justice because the certain point in the country they believe that is the way the 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 constitution in the country, the constitution is just a business. If you don't have money, the constitution doesn't function for you. But if you have money, the country functions for you, which is not supposed to be. Because that's why you work. Many people in the country that are victims, that are victims of the system. Because if you doesn't have money, you go to court. What happened to you? Second, the man that have money will just go tell the judge, look, this is what it did, and we got the money. They might just take away your property. So the people in the country, the system, we got a job, we are system. Man, I said, any time was a little bit better doing it. Job, we are trying. I can say that for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just to read, you know, you have some few comments because we have to acknowledge our um, our chat room. And that is Mr. Baba Clay Waka Smith. Um, Francis Do doesn't have an iota of what he's got going on but just deliberately um deliberate deliberating blah 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 firstly the economic situation in freetown is worsened than liberia 
100 USD in Sierra Leone is equivalent into 1 million 100,000 views. Cost of living is extremely harder in Sierra Leone than Liberia. Uh, with all due respect, Mr. Smith, I think most people will disagree with you in, um, because um, this is just not right. You're equating the exchange rate, which is really high, but looking at the cost of living between the two in terms of the exchange rate, I can tell you this for sure that not many people will agree with you, sir. <clears throat> And I also want to welcome Mr. Jiba Sise to the program. Welcome, Mr. Jiba Sise. And Mr. Jimmy Othello, Mr. Doe is correct. War is not sudden. There is system breakdown that leads to it. Example, politics, violence, and oppression of people in one country triggers migration which puts pressure on another. Of course, that's absolutely correct. Uh, that's the domino effect. And then Sister Janet Sony. In a long time, it's a long time thing, but George, we are promised, but it is worse. What we are now experiencing is now we haven't, it's something we haven't seen. That's Sister Janet Sony. And um, Brother Jimmy Okello again, Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Guinea are intrinsically connected. There is a domino effect politically. Yes, that's correct. There's a domino effect. And this is what I was trying to say to Mr. Doe. And Mr. Doe gets it. He knows that. That's why we talk about the Mano River Union, for example. That's how intrinsically we are kind of connected. And I think what we're saying here, it borders on the stats. It borders on the data. But well, here we go, Mr. Mr. Do. I want to introduce some other international connection in terms of what we are talking about. At the beginning of my program, ladies and gentlemen, just before I go forward uh, um, to the next question, I just want to say that today is the 27th of September. It's a Friday, 2019. And um, I am your host and presenter of this um, dynamic and wonderful show, The Then and Now. And I'm having a very, very special guest from Canada. And he is none other but Mr. Francis Doe. And we are talking about serious issues, economic issues. And the critical component of tonight's discussion is based on the fact that should there be an economic crime court set up for the Republic of Liberia? This is exactly what we are talking about. But in the meantime, we are also looking at the trickle down effect should such thing takes place. What happens because intrinsically, Liberia is then connected economically, politically, socially, culturally, and you name it, with some of the other nations in the region. And once upon a time, they had a union called the Mano River Union, MRU, and you can go and look into this. So Mr. Doe, here is the question, sir. Now, with Donald Trump in office, prior to Donald Trump, Liberia was being supported massively. It appears as if there were no fiscal discipline in terms of what was being given to Liberia, no accountability, although I want to believe there was, but very limited. Under Mr. Trump, do you think the situation is the same or is there a difference? Uh... What is happening in Liberia? That look at in a logical point, in a logical conclusion, right? I'm looking at it from a logical point, from a logical aspect. You know, during early time, during the past government, there was corruption, but there was respect, respect for the system, right? But at yeah. that point of time, this is not corruption. This is not corruption, man. This is your state looting. The looting is state cover. So I don't really think that when Donald Trump talk about United Nations reform and Donald Trump being a businessman, I don't really think that Donald Trump will support a president that riding a private, that have a private jet, that have a 41 uni, that have all these things. If a man is a richer guy, what does the American government want to support a rich country? It's not a poor country, right? The man have private jet, the man have everything to his exposure. So I think I don't really think that that's I don't see that's happening to Liberia. No. I don't, so in other not words, even Donald Trump, I don't see that happening. So in other words, the kind of support that Donald Trump was having, 
uh, I mean, um, Liberia was having under previous presidents, under Donald Trump, you don't believe that is going to be the case because Donald Trump is a kind of different president. Is that correct, sir? Yeah, but if he said, forget about Donald Trump, he even said that Obama, Obama won't do that because the American will question Obama. Why do you give him support to this guy? You write a public there, you make more money than you, everything in the country. Because the past government, everything they were doing, they were system, they were approaching the system regarding corruption, but they get respect for the system, right? But this man have yeah. a private jet, they might fly, to, you know how much it takes to cost a, to fly a private jet? Do not try have a private jet, you know how much it costs to, to maintain the private jet? You and the medicine state, but do not try to be on there. And he, he fly the private jet, and they got fly the private jet. What's the point? They are, we got it. it, it if you say we're doing Obama time, I think I do just look at the whole system that this is, it doesn't make sense. Technically, it doesn't make sense. Oh, Mr. So, come on. Sorry for the expression, but people don't have a patience to support things that doesn't make sense. Oh. All right. I mean, that was a. That, I think I think that was a that was a fair point. I mean, because you're trying to articulate articulate your case. There are a couple of people who wants to make a call. So let me just read the number before I put it in the chat room. If you've got a question for me or Mr. Doe, please feel free to call this number. It's 074-3200-2628. I repeat, 074-3200-2628. As most of our guests tonight are foreign, foreign in the sense that they are watching it from a different country other than where I am based, Please don't forget, if you want to call this number that I've just spoken of, you have to add the country code, which is the UK. That's 44, and you have to omit the zero. So it's 44743200 or 00268. So 44743200268. I'll put it up on the chat room as, in the chat room as well. Mr. Doe, back to what we were talking about, sir. Do you think George Weah will make the difference in terms of um, corruption? Uh, no. When you no. say no, will you elaborate, please? Because George Weah won't make a difference. Mr. Kuma, George Weah is so, he's already the indicted criminal, you know. Way. That's kind of that's kind of harsh, you know, here for the president of the republic. But as usual, we give you an opportunity here. What do you mean by an indicted criminal? George Weah has never been to a, a criminal court. This is probably just public opinion. Is that what you're basing it on? Because he's never yeah. been to a criminal court to be indicted. Yeah, yeah. He's a crim he's an indicted criminal in the court of uh, public opinion. Okay. okay. So that means and, elaborate, uh, Mr. Kruman. Please do. Okay. Joe, we are is a guy, first of all, uh, Mr. Kruman, you had 20 for the state cover that you should have put the money to the very local bank, right? You take the money and carry it to your community. To Nicru Town, 25 million. Let me, just, let me not forget about the complicated one, right? 25 million from the central bank. The president of Sierra Leone would never take 25 million from the bank of Central Sierra Leone and take it and give it to those people in the ghetto. That's a criminal act by itself. That in nature is a criminal act by itself. The, the job we are going. All right. All right, just pause right there. there. Just pause right there, if you will, please. I think we've got first caller on the line. Um, caller, I'm sure you're trying to address the program that is run right now. Is that correct, sir? Oh, please. Yes, sir. Okay. First of all, um, if you will please identify yourself and where you're calling from, and then you can either pose your question or if you want to make a contribution to the program, then you can. We're calling from Belgium. Okay. Uh, I'm listening to Francis Doe is talking here. The, the and what's your what's your what's your what's your name, please? My name is Ricky. Ricky. Okay. Francis, can you hear? Can you hear Ricky? We've got a Ricky calling from Belgium. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Ricky, fire away, please. Go on. 
No, no, he's listening, Ricky. Come on, he's re he's listening. Well, it's uh, it's Francis Dorsey, the just where it's already a criminal. Uh, you are sitting down, you have a run away watching you. But can you come up with the evidence to say, yeah, this is what those men have been coming out of proving that just where it's a uh, criminal? What Francis do and others just come out air and just brush on something to say a negative view of the country. He please, can you please allow him when he's speaking that he speak with facts? Instead of just speaking out of uh, inner uh, arrogance of just because of hatred, please. All right, yes, the president, the president of Labour saying he's a criminal. Then he, then he show a fact. Then he said this is this uh, the document have been coming out. This is the document I've been proving. All right, um, Ricky, just stay there. Please don't go away. And for your information, um, when he made the allegation, I did challenge him on that because. Um, if you were to make an allegation, it has to border on fact. And it, it sounded like it was emphatic saying that the president of the Republic of Liberia, George Weir, is an indicted, you know, yeah, I um, don't want to use the word again, but he was just about to develop on what I challenge him on. And then you call and you are making the same, you're expressing the same sentiment. So please don't go away because probably you have another question or contribution to make. Mr. Doe, you've had the question. It's the same. You're accusing the president of the Republic of Liberia of something clearly by law, which he's not, but you have a court of public opinion. Will you elaborate, please? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As I won't really want to know, as this man, what the president doing about the 25 million? Does the president know did the president initiate does the president sign? For the 25 million to be carried to the Niku town, what he called Niku town. And who did the president get the money, the 25 million to in Niku town? Two. Instead, they, instead they of how you asking, it, it, sounds, it, sounds, it sounds very much like a question at this particular point in time, Mr. Do. Instead of asking a question which is more rhetorical because it seems like you have the answers, you said you were going to present the evidence. So leave the historical side of things. You know, yeah, is who did he give it to? Who signed? Okay. And just tell the general okay. public, including Mr. Ricky, who is on the phone now listening to you, why do you say the president, why did you make the accusation against the president? Just present the evidence, please, if you will. Okay. One, if the president takes 20, if the president signed for $25 million to stimulate the country economy, then the president signed the money by the president's instruction. The president take the money and take it, take it from the bank and take it to the central, to the central bank. No, no, Ricky, Ricky, okay, Ricky, I will call you. I will call you back, or you can call me on. on um, yeah. Okay, I will call. I will call you back. I will call you back. Because this guy, this guy just come out always to speak on negative things. Or they have completely no good of. No good. Yeah, but Ricky, 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 Ricky. Um, I know you, you've probably been listening to Mr. Doe. What happened here tonight is Mr. Doe is on a different channel in which whatever he says will be challenged, just like we're doing now. So you've got an opportunity. Yeah, if, you challenge, if you challenge Francis Doe from now to tomorrow, there's nothing good he can come out of that guy. I don't know why you even bring it on your show as a guest, because he's not an important guest. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, the voice. Like this for decades. There's nothing good you can get out of this guy. Mr. Ricky, unfortunately, the voices of our dissenters. Mr. Kuma, can I address Mr. Ricky? Mr. Doe, Mr. Do, I will give you the platform shortly. I just want to address something. Um, regardless of, uh, I had many calls today. I didn't want to say this on national media. I had many calls on international media. I, I had many calls today and many messages in which Mr. Doe, Mr. Doe, Mr. Doe, Mr. Doe, Do, in a different sense. Of course, I do understand it because even me as a moderator on this program, there are times when I go on other people's program when I'm, you know, yeah, um, invited, there are things that are said about me. So I go there, you know, not to try to prove it, but they give me, you know, yeah, the benefit of the doubt. So Mr. Ricky, the point here I'm trying to make is you've been listening to Mr. Doe for a while and I get it. I am going to challenge Mr. Doe tonight, probably like you've never heard somebody challenge him before on the issue on why he will accuse a sitting president without proof, you know, yet to smear. So he will be in a position to tell us. 
he's got his opinion, but he's got to be careful with the opinion because that is his opinion and he's got a right to it. But there is a limit even to free speech. So, Mr. Doe, I give you the platform once again in terms of the accusation you make against the sitting president of the Republic of Liberia, Mr. George Opomane Usumani Wea. Why do you say what you said about him in terms of um, corrupt practices? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kumar. Mr. Kumar, first of all, when we talk, when this uh, this guy, uh, Joe Wea, signed for $25 million, right? $25 million. From the state cover. Yeah. And the $25 million, I want you please do your investigation. And that $25 million, the Minister of Finance for Joe Wea, the $25 million were taken to Nickel Town. This is a town they call Nickel Town. What happened to the investigation of the $25 million? Second, Mr. Kromar, where the president got the money that he's building all the luxurious property in our country? Two, that's number two. Where does he get the money that he's building all the luxurious property in our country? Three, uh, Mr. Kromar, our country, the budget of our country, doesn't see the point made, the point made to have a budget. And if we follow the constitution, I said it's for a to get $1.5 million budget every year. That's a crime by itself. Why not in the Constitution, if you do it, a crime against the state? That's a crime. Who taking the money? Joe Rob White taking okay, the money. I think we've got, we've got, we, okay, Mr. Francis, I've got your point and I'm going to bring you back on those points and we will challenge those points. But we've got a second caller, I believe he's from Philadelphia. Caller, if you will state your name and where you're calling from, please. Mark, and I call from Philadelphia. You okay. Know, okay. Thank you very much, Mark. So, Mark, um, obviously, if there's a question, you can pose the question, or if you just want to develop um, on the argument, you're free. You feel free to do so, please. Yes. The floor is yours. Yes. This, this is not a question. This is uh, a comment. You see, the guy, the guy that called yeah. challenged Mr. Doe on issues that is making allegations without uh, without uh, facts. That okay. is not true. Okay. Mr. Doe is making the allegations Mr. Doe has and other people have been making in Liberia are based on facts. Those allegations are based on facts. But when you present the facts and people tell you, no, that is not factual enough, so we will not accept it as fact. Let me give you one point. Sure. It is by law that the sitting president of the Republic of Liberia should not accept gifts from mm -hmm. whosoever. That compromises his position. Yep. What has our president done? Our president has accepted gifts and bragged about it that he received this from his friend who gave a plea from his friend to boost his morale. Okay. By law, that is wrong. That is illegal. You cannot it's spell out in the laws. You cannot accept. Just, it. just a, just a quick correction there, and our uh, Mark, 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 one minute, please. Just a quick correction there. I don't think that there is any law that says that the president of the republic cannot accept gifts. I think there's a caveat around accepting gifts. I do agree with you. It compromises the position. So I think when you do accept a gift or a gift is given to you. You have to declare it. It's not yours personally. I guess that's what you're trying to say, isn't it? No, that is not what I'm trying to say. What okay. I'm trying to say is, as a president of Liberia, it is spelled out clearly in the laws that as president of Liberia, you cannot receive gifts from private individuals. You cannot. As okay. president, you okay. cannot receive gifts. That okay. is clear. There is no, there, it, it is not implicit, it is explicit. Okay. You see? So, I'm clear, I'm clear about it. And other people can call to, 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 to disprove what I'm saying if this is not the law. Okay? Yeah, so obvi obviously. Been, go on, go on, please, Mark. Go on. So, these things have been happening. Okay? Couple with, you brought up a point earlier when you talk about global market. 
that taxes are then dropped on the global market. So there is a dominate, uh, a domino effect yeah. for which everybody is struggling. Yeah. That I want to agree with. That I agree with. But look, brother, when things are changing, we as human beings, dynamic human beings, we should also be changing along with the current trend. You see, we cannot be, things cannot be changing on the global market. Your rubber is uh, 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 devalued. It doesn't have much price on the, on, the, on the global market anymore. Your iron ore does not also have uh, 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 a price on the global market anymore. And you continue to live like those guys that were your pre pre predecessors. You see, your predecessors enjoy those, those, those immunities. When they were there, things were different. Just a but quick... For you right now... Just a quick point, I mean, just a quick point, um, 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 Mark. Um, two things quickly. Somebody's just challenged you, you know, in terms of which part of the law and section that we are talking about um, um, the acceptance of um, gifts from public or private um, individuals. Somebody just asked that. But secondly, what I want to say, what you just, what you said earlier was um, um, what Mr. Do is saying is the truth backed by evidence. I wanted to ask you uh -huh. where. Did you say that right? Yeah. So what I wanted to ask you is, where is this evidence? Because even Mr. Doe was just about to develop the argument based on the evidence that he is got, but he subjected it to the court of public opinion. But he could have more evidence, you know, here per se. But since you've spoken that he's come up with evidence or there are available evidence, Mr. Mark, for the interest of the general public that are watching us, where is this evidence, please? Would you direct us, reference us to something or somewhere where we can later go on to at least to come up with another program to say, yes, indeed, this is what we've done and we've come up with this? Okay. I was just about to do that. Okay, I thank was, you. Uh, in, in, in flight to do that. Okay. Look, uh, <clears throat> some of the things that should be looked at, okay, when I meant that you were talking about global market, this is where I was going. Yeah. It is clear in Liberia, look, by law also, the first lady of the Republic of Liberia, there is no legal or statutory provision that says the first lady of Liberia should have a budget in the national budget. No, there is no statutory provision for that. Okay. You see? So the, the first the world is just a single individual has a budget in the uh, national uh, uh, budget that is equivalent to a million dollar, a million United States dollar. That is, this, this is not called for. You see, yeah. then you come back and say, "Oh no, it's because of uh, uh, the global market that things." Uh, our prices have dropped, so we all are facing it. No, it is how you are handling things in Liberia. No, but, 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 but Mark, I mean, I must give you that point that you just cited because legally speaking, Mr. Dope, if you will bear with me, please. Um, legally speaking, and you are putting, I guess, some legitimate points because this is what I want to talk about. Because when you talk uh -huh. about the first lady being entitled, not entitled, but is receiving 1.5 million um, US dollar, which is appropriated for in the budget, but not legally, that is completely wrong when it's not legal. But what I was saying is also based on the fact that the demise, you know, yeah, in terms of the Liberian dollar, it, pairing it with um, the US dollar, um, commodities of goods and services, you know, yeah, skyrocketing and then your money cannot match up with the U.S. dollar. Obviously, that is creating difficulties for the Liberian public. That's the point I was trying to make. But the first lady receiving yeah. 1.5 million, and if it's not budgeted for legally, it should not be happening because this is putting strain on the economy. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, you, you, uh, exactly so. So that is what I'm saying. Even though things prices have skyrocketed on the global market, but if we have positioned ourselves to do some adjustment, to, 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 to spend in line with our budget, we will not be feeding the beach as we are feeding in Liberia right now. That's my point. Okay. You see, we cannot be, uh, uh, how you call it, facing uh, 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 
problem with our, uh, our commodities, our export to the global market, we cannot be facing problem with that. And at the same time, people be spending off the budget. Our president will call Nigerian players from, from, from Nigeria come to Liberia, and after playing with them, he distribute to them $5,000 each. Okay? Right. That is called spending off the budget. That is wasteful spending. This is why I say I agree with Mr. Duo when he said what is going on in Liberia is mismanagement of funds, of resources. That is complete mismanagement of resources. Okay. Our president flies, our president flies private jet in a country where we are facing stagflation, high inflation, or employment, but our, our president yet flies private jet. Okay, Mark, 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 yeah. Mark, Mark. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause you there because I want to ask you one or two quick questions. I'm very okay. happy to bring you on this program. You know, yeah, one of these days because it seems like um you are loaded and um well read of us in terms of the issues, and I guess the public would like to hear from you. But today we've got your guest, and certainly you are endorsing the guest. You know, yeah, from your position, as I can see, which I very much appreciate. Um, Sebastian Stanku, my brother, welcome to the program and thanks for watching. Um, it's just two quick things before I let you go, Mark. Okay. You've endorsed um, um, on point um, a mm -hmm. couple of things that Mr. Do the guest, have said. But I want you, or I'm looking forward to see whether you will equally um, address two things that he said which are very critical, which is $25 million was appropriated to the president, which he took to New Crew Town. Of course, Mr. Doe yes. was going to develop on that, and I was going to challenge him on that. I was going to give him the benefit of the doubt to talk about it. He also talked about luxurious apartments that the president is building all over the place. And he was also about to develop yes. on that. But since you supported Mr. Um, Doe, just before you go, because you're just, um, you know, you're touching on issues, what would you say to these two briefly, please? These two issues that I've just cited. Those, 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 those two issues are just an addition, are just addition, additional information as to why I support Mr. Doe that this government is less managing our resources and the suffering that our people are doing in experiencing in Liberia is as, as a result of this government inability to 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 focus to redirect her for resources or our resources to 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 to, 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 to issues that are of paramount concern to us. Just let's take the uh, the twenty five million dollars mop up, the so called twenty five million dollars mop up exercise that uh, you are you are talking about. This is money that was withdrawn from the uh, 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 country's uh, how you call it reserve. Okay, and since this exercise, the president has uh, uh, established or instructed series of uh, of uh, uh, series of committees, established series of committees to investigate this one point five million dollar mob of exercise. And up to now, we have gotten no clear cut information as to how it was spent. Okay. Okay, 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 Mark. Um, thank you very much for that. That would be unfair to the guest because the guest is going to address this anyway. But I really do appreciate your insight. I, I really want to tell you this. Please share this video. Please send me your details because I'm re I really would like to bring you on the program because I think you've got a very strong opinion on a particular issue. Thank you for calling. That was Mark all the way from Philadelphia in the United States. Uh, Mr. Doe, thank you so much for your patience, but you are about to develop the issues surrounding 25 million that was taken to Newcrutown. What I want you to say is like, where did the 25 million come from? Why was it taken to Newcrutown? Why do you think this was corruption? Or this is mismanagement? Because you do say George Weir's government is more of mismanagement than corruption. Why? Because... You know, there's a reason that we have a bank in the country, right? We have, there's a reason that we have a banking system in the country. So the banking system can do the right thing because the bank, the bank have a system, right? But 
if you will take up money for the bank, for the central bank, and go give it to an individual, that the individual has no need. And those people that are doing those things, they are the closest friend to the president. A good friend. Like, uh, Mr. Kruman, me and you are friends. But I'm a criminal, I can see every day. And you are saying every time I see you to my house, and you benefiting from my, you benefiting from what I'm seeing. Technically, you are a criminal because you're supporting my art. And anybody that support a crime, the person is a criminal. Those people, the 25 million, the final minister won't take a 25 million dollar from the central bank carry to the to the ghetto without the president indulged, without the president knowing something about it. The president knows all these things are happening, but the president using those guys as still good to commit crime. When when, when, when you say it. when you say when you say when you say when you say take $25 million to the ghetto. $25 million is no child's play. And you say to the ghetto, which is, um, it sounds almost like disparaging one sector of the country, you know, like people who come from Town, they are not of value. Is 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 that what you're saying? No. When I say of value, Mr. Kroma, That's a bank. If you take a 25 million and take it to an individual, right? Tuition, what's the point of the institution? What's the point of you having an institution? And in Nikuta, I'm not saying the people are not get out of those people. Mr. Do. Because the poor, they live into an area that depreciate, the area. it's a depreciated area. The poor, most of them can't even tell a poor to get food to eat. If you go and tell them, uh, you go and tell people I take twenty five million to those people who is there in the area that have money for no, Mr. Kuma, I can tell you, I can bet you if you carry fifty thousand dollars in Nukuta and ask somebody, can you bring me um uh, a team for fifty thousand? Everybody will be struggling. The uh, that someone in our community cannot chip fifty thousand. Why will you take twenty five million dollars from the bank? Then what do you have a And that is, the question, that is the that is the million dollar out of that twenty five million dollar that allegedly was taken to Newcastle, which the the question I want to ask, Brother Bokarisa, I will thank you for being very active on the forum tonight. Which is I am going to have to invite the Deputy Minister of Communication because what is being said here. Some government official will have to come and address this issue regarding, you know, yeah, most of the allegation that's been made here. But Brother Bokarisa, well, trust me, we, we're going to do that. I'm going to try to get in touch with the Deputy Minister of Communication of the Republic of Liberia. And Sister Ellen Paul, I believe, is asking Brother um, um, Doe, why don't you think that this is corruption? Because I thought you were trying to distinguish between corruption, which you thought was of yesterday, as compared to um, George Weir's government, which you think is more of mismanagement than no, corruption. No, no, no. We can, one, one more, one more, one more, one more, one more remark, and then I give you the floor again. Bringing Doe on this platform is a disgrace to the Liberian community. I don't endorse that. Mr. Doe is fully entitled to his views. We know what his views are. We've given him the platform and he's articulating those. We will disagree to agree, but of course, and that's what he's doing. I don't see how this amounts to a disgrace for having an opinion. So Mr. Doe, um, Cephas Livingstone, which one of this is, uh, you see, so there's a mixed reaction on the platform, which is usual of platforms of this nature. But um, going back, you wanted to address certain issues. I don't want to, you, you to be personal. Forget about you know the negatives. No. Uh, because once you're doing this stuff, that means you've put on your, um, what we used to call the man from um, local government those days. Um, um, I've forgotten his name. His name will come up. He wears his gown. And whatever is thrown at him, he's Kwetambo. Kwetambo. Yeah. He wears his gown. And whatever happens, he survives. So... You should not be paying attention to all of this, you know, yeah, some of this um, unnecessary criticism. But we've got Henry Thompson. Your guest is not speaking the facts. Is the president the person that signed for the money? I was going to ask you this anyway on this 25 million because this is critical. 
You talk about the institution and 25 million. And Mr. Bill, let's bring it back to reality. Mm -hmm. 25 million is not something you can put into your pocket. It's not something that you mm -hmm. can just load into a van. It's an mm -hmm. awful, awful lot of money. And that has mm -hmm. to go through the system. So two mm -hmm. questions to you, Mr. Bill. Mm -hmm. What was this 25 million all about? And how did it end up in Nuku Town? Which if it were being taken to people there, that's an awful lot of money because that could develop Nuku Town into a complete city, a modern city. So what's this connection between 25 million and Nuku Town? You see, it, uh, uh, Mr. Kuma, uh, let me, first of all, let me address the, the person that, that say mismanagement, corruption. The difference between corruption and mismanagement. Mm. Corruption is going through the system and manipulating the system and le taking little and taking more and using little for the internal purpose. But taking everything that belongs to the state and using it for a different purpose, that's a mismanagement. It's like you want to buy the clothes. You decide to buy the Gucci clothes. But you take the money and spend it for something else. That's all, that also calls a mis mismanagement because you, that money was internal for different things. The guy taking, uh, Joe, we are taking the 25 million. He said you're supposed to do the mop out exercise to mop out the liberty, the excess liquidity on the market. And who have the excess liquidity? Who control the market? The bank control the market, right? The bank, because people do deal with the bank. But if you take a money from the bank and take it and give it to an individual, a private citizen, how do you consider that? That's mismanagement. You, because the institution, to give you accountability, you can hold the institution responsible if, if anything goes wrong with the money. But if you take a money and give it to a private individual, how do you call that one, Mr. Kumar? Well, again, it's, it sounds more rhetorical, you know, yeah, which is like mismanaging, you know, yeah, what was appropriated um, to, 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 to you. But um, again, I want you to sort of clarify, or if you can go in depth, what was or what is meant by mop up? Because I know there was an operation called mop up in which this 25 million is interlinked. So for the benefit of the listening public, what was this mop-up operation was all about? Can you expand, please? Will you expand? Okay. There were as the liberty, you know, the local currency were in the market too much. The the, uh, the I don't know what they did with the money. When the guy came into power, Joe, we are came into power, the poor government that was alert in our country history that sixteen billion dollar walk out of the country cover. 16 billion dollars disappeared. In the same period, we got tons of money circling on the market. Tons of money. The government don't know who bring the money in the market. And no, the government cannot get account of the money. So what happened? The government decided to bring it, to take out all this money from the market and bring the money in the bank. The only way to do it is the government to buy the money. So the government used it. This is a governmental scam. The government used this money the money in the market as a scam to take to withdraw twenty five million dollars from the country for the country cover. Yeah, but this money, Mister Doe, um, correct me if I'm wrong here. Before George Weah took over, there was some money which was already at the port of uh, the free port of Monrovia. Is that correct? Is that the money that yeah. we are talking about? Yeah, this so, is still building. So, uh, Okay, in the same yeah, before Mr. Do, uh, uh, before Mr. Um, we are um, took over, how yeah. sure are we, or are, are there documents to prove that at the time that George We are took over, the sixteen million or the twenty-five million, whatever it was, there are document documents to prove that a container full of money, U.S. dollars, was still there, and Mr. Um, Weir's administration took charge of exactly the. Uh, amount of money that we are talking about. I want to take you to yeah, the border. Yeah, because the the minister of information, you land you did not be. First of all, they tell the money that were the money that were led. 
the information minister came to the public and make it public to understand that uh, they said part of all the money they say was nine billion, something around nine billion. The so there we go. So there we there we go. If I can pause you right there. So now you are saying sixteen uh, million. Sixteen at billion. At some other point, yeah. At some other point, we heard about twenty-five million, but this all has to do with this money surrounding this mop up, inverted commas, mop up no, exercise. No, that's not a mop up. The, uh, Mr. Kumar, let me bring something to your attention. Please do. The, that's 25 million. The 25 million it was the government, the money that the government took in the cover. The 16 billion was the money that disappeared. The 104 million is the one that disappeared from the government cover. So this is a. So there are, there are two different sets of monies, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The 16 billion, the 16 billion were printed by the previous government, and the 16 billion were on the way in transit. At that point of time, the new government was just transitioning. The government, the money disappeared. We have people in our possession that the money actually came, the money disappeared. The 16 billion. <clears throat> but in the same period of time, Mr. Kuma, in the same period of time, the government decided to what to do carry on a more for exercise. And the government decided to take the money to where? To the to the least to the least community in the in the country to the least to the ghetto that community like a ghetto he decided to take the money in the ghetto but the question Mr Kumar so generally please ask the government can you take a fifty thousand dollar today and carry it to that ghetto and see whether you will see an individual that I will change that will give you the change for fifty thousand I'm not saying twenty five million right I'm not saying a million I'm saying a fifty thousand. So again, I haven't heard you address the real issue of twenty-five million dollars being taken mm -hmm. to Newcrotown. Are you saying that twenty-five million was taken to Newcrotown? Yeah. Um, to the, why was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go on, please. According for the government's spokesperson, the government, according to the government, according to investigation, they said they took the money to buy to buy the Liberian data from the market, to mop up exercise, which means to collect the, the Liberian data, because the Liberian data will cause inflation in the country. So let me ask you, Mr. Abdul, let me ask you this quickly before you go any further. Okay, let's say this the, this is the excuse, you know, yeah, theoretically, this is the excuse that a government official, or the government, because apparently that official was representing the government of Liberia, saying that they're going in a mop-up exercise to buy the Liberian dollar off the market. They have 25 million US dollar. You yeah. as a sound citizen of the Republic, although you are far away, what would you buy into that? Why will 25 million be taken into Newcrotown as a mop-up exercise? Is there where the entire money that they were going to buy, the Liberian dollar that they were going to buy, which would have been the equivalent of um, the 25 million, which in Liberian dollar at current rate will have occupied, if not the entire Newcrotown, including the beaches of Newcrotown, I mean, Newcrotown, it doesn't make yeah. really sense to me that we want to accept that 25 million was taken there. This story, in the end, what I'm trying to say, it's not plausible, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Doe, if you know what I'm trying to say. 25 million taken to Newcrotown to go buy up Liberian dollar, and it didn't go through the institutions. 25 million, we know what we're talking about. So a container full of money, yeah. US dollar, probably yeah. thousand, thousand notes. So it, it's not plausible. Yeah. It, it's not true. It's not true, Mr. Doe. Is it? Yeah, but the government, the government want us to believe. That's what I'm saying. That's why if you listen to me, I say Joga is an indicted criminal because the type of explanation makes you a criminal. It's a criminal explanation. A quick point of correction. You might disagree with Mr. Weir. You might have names to call the president. But when you say indicted, I guess you know what indicted means as an academic. So where was yeah, Mr. But, Weir but, but, indicted? That means, uh, Mr. Kumar, that means prove my, that means laid a foundation, right? Sure. It's perfect. If we were to carry on investigation right now, Joga would be the suspect. If we, if we were, if we, Mr. Doe, Mr. Doe, I'm just yes. trying to paraphrase what you've just said. 
if mm -hmm. we were to carry out an investigation, implying mm -hmm. that investigation has not been carried out yet, and we no, are on the presumption, according to legal jurisprudence, that every man is innocent until proven guilty. But you seem to be certain, and at the same time, there seems to be a contradiction here. So there is a conflict, and you're sounding like you're more becoming more conflicted, that Mr. Weir is an indicted, okay? And that's the point I'm trying to make, which is, no, he's not Mr. indicted. Mr. 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 Kuma. Yes, Mr. Kuma. Mr. Kuma. Yes, sir. If we, were to carry Sorry, on if we were to carry on our investigation right now, let's say if I were to initiate the investigation, I will question Joe Weir first. I will question him. Okay. Okay. You I think you've got you've got another caller. You've got another caller on the line. I'm not sure whether it's the same guy, but from Philadelphia. Let's hear him. Okay, Mr. Doe. Um, caller, yes. your name and where you're calling from, please. Hey, Mr. Kuman, this is Max again. Oh, sorry. Um, just a quick information. Yeah, sure, man. Sure. Thanks for calling back, Mark. Go away, away, please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the twenty-five million dollars mock the so-called $25 million mock of money that you and Mr. Doe are discussing. It is it, it isn't a matter of where the money was taken, but how the money was distinct, how the money was used. Okay? When the public got to know that this amount of money had been spent without any tangible results, the president got concerned. He established a series of committees to uh, investigate the issues. And those committees all came up with the same result, mm -hmm. that the way the map of, of exercise was carried out did not portray mm -hmm. any uh, or, or due diligence. There was no uh, or, or tangible procedure that people who follow to trace how the money was 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 used. And according to the reports, people that were cited as taking part into the process came up and said, no, we don't know about this money. Mm -hmm. For instance, they say X amount of money was given to X of to Mr. X and we received X amount of US dollars from Mr. X. Those people said, no, it did not happen. We do not know about what you guys are saying. You see? So mm -hmm. it is the procedure that we are talking about. You can tell me, say, oh, uh, Mr. Kumar knows about what I'm saying. For instance, Mr. Kumar, I gave Mr. Kumar uh, uh, $100 and Mr. Kumar uh, $100, like uh, American dollars, and Mr. Kumar gave me $100 like billion dollar back. And Mr. Kumar comes and says, no, I don't know what you guys are talking about. And you say, mm -hmm. there is no fire play in there. There is. So Mark, let me so Mark, let me get let me let me let me get you let me get you now because um I'm happy that you call back for clarification, which I really do appreciate. But in what I take from what you're saying, the 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 president George Weir initiated something almost equivalent to an inquiry into how the mop up operation went. So unlike what Mr. Doe is saying, in which he is saying as per my understanding, that the president is an indicted, you know, yeah, with a C word because of the 25 million. You sound like you're different because something happened to 25 million. The president seemed not to understand and he initiated an inquiry. Would that be a fair characterization of the situation, Mark? That's, that's a fair characterization. Thank you very thank you. Thank you very much for your clarification, sir. Um and and Mark, please don't forget. Send me your details. I have to bring you on this program so we can talk, you know, yeah, about issues. I really appreciate your contribution tonight. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So, Mr. Doe, I'll come back to you. That was just a clarification from Philadelphia. The president, of course, is the head. He takes responsibility. But he also initiated an investigation into this alleged mop-up exercise involving $25 million dollars.
So until the president is taken through the court of law, which I was just developing, that based on legal jurisprudence, we are innocent until proven guilty. The president has not been proven guilty of anything as yet. Why then do you have the audacity, Mr. Doe, of saying that the president is what you are saying he is? But, 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 but let, let me say this thing, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kruma, uh, Mr. Kruma. Yes, sir. You know, the president, if the president were innocent, the president won, the president does, they never knew what is happening. First of all, the president should have fired the final minister, the man that involved into those things. You can't carry on an investigation to be a one side investigation. So we are investigation. Who, who, who initiated the, the, the MOPO exercise? Why you we've not, got another you call. Not we've got another call. Mr. Doe, we've got, we've got another call. We've got another call. And I'm sure this call is for you or they want to make contribution. Sorry, I don't mean to just stop you right in mid-flow. We'll come back. You've got all the time. Um, caller, will you state your name and where you're calling from, please? Uh, Mr. Kuman, it's uh, Ricky. I just call you. I call to clarify something very short. Oh, yeah, sure. Fire away, Ricky, from Belgium, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Kumar, you, you, promised, you promised to bring Mike on your show, on your platform. Yeah, that's, co that's, co that's correct, Ricky. Okay. So, please, it is time for Mike to come on his platform. You have been endorsing on your, on your platform today as his special guest. Once he claim that he knows what he's doing. So, if you know, I love Mike to come and uh, speak for you. Um, stay right, stay right there. Thank you for your contribution. Of course, Mr. Mr. Do, it's Mr. Not very, very, yeah. One, one minute, Mr. Mr. Do. Kuma. One minute, Mr. Do. One, one minute, please. Yeah. So, Ricky, um, Mr. Um, Mark, it's my first time hearing him, and because he's got strong opinion, that's why I ask him to come on the show as well, so he can register his opinion. I am familiar and aware that Mr. Doe is my very, very, and I repeat, and I, the emphasis is mine, is my very, very special guest tonight. But you will agree, Ricky, that we all have got dissenting views. You might be in support of what Mr. Doe is saying, you might be against. Mark might be in support, he might be against. Even you in Belgium, I would like to hear you some other day that you come on my program and then we have this discussion around Liberia. And I'm extending okay. similar invitation to you not to come and speak for Mr. Doe, mm -hmm. because Mr. Doe is equally capable of speaking for himself. It's just the difference in opinions. That's what we're trying to entertain, Mr. Uh, Ricky. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Kumar. That is why I'm saying Doe should be given the opportunity to speak on things that he claims that he knows about the government or about Liberia. Because Mark is speaking, Mark is speaking, uh, speaking of it. Uh, uh, 
you are asking it. So okay, Ricky, saying, Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. Ricky, Ricky, let me let me just say this quickly before I get back to Mr. Doe, okay? I get what you're saying, but um, I, I am moderating the program and I have to, you know, yeah, exercise and express um, due respect, you know, yeah, for my guest on the show. I'm asking the questions. And in the end, in shows of this kind, mm -hmm. nature, be it CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, NBC, whichever one you want to name it, it's you in the end that's gonna, you know, yeah, make your decision as to how you saw the program. It's based on the on the court of public opinion. We're just doing well. So I'm challenging Mr. Doe on issues, you know, yeah, which I don't have full satisfaction about, and the rest of it, and you are the guest you are listening. In the end, you will make up your mind as to who did what, who asked what, what was asked, how it was asked. And then you will conclude. This is the way this kind of programs work. And this is what I'm doing. So Mr. Doe is saying what he thinks he knows. And I'm just challenging him on issues, especially ones that I feel strongly about, especially the 25 million US dollars. You heard me clearly. 25 million dollars being taken to Nucretown, to me, is a no-brainer. Because if you flood Nucretown with 25 million dollars, which means that Nucretown is going to be more powerful than Broad Street, the whole of Monrovia. Yeah, exactly. So I just want you to please be patient with me. I know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a country that I understand inside out about. I might not be up to date with it as we speak today, but the historical aspect going to maybe 20 years, 15 years ago, I do. And I'm currently researching on it a lot. But thank you very much, Ricky, for your point. Now, the first question we lost in Jesus and Abreu, please. I want you to speak that question. He's listening. He's listening to you. He can hear you. He can hear you live and direct. And if he's got interest in answering the question, Mr. Doe. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Kruman. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, five guy, I have so many pamphlets for our government. He just, uh, you know, this is my country. I don't want to make my country look really bad, and I have to extend some respect for the president. But if this guy want me, if this guy want me to explain and explore the president, to explore the government, how the government take the government that take fun, that take a donor phone and I go to the donor account, it's stole from the donor. It's the government we're talking about. That's an evidence. There's a paper evidence that all the ambassadors in the country petition the government to return their money back. So me, I don't want Mr. Kroman, when I talk about mismanagement, I have a video recording in my possession that the government, all the ambassadors in the country, the donors are holding from because the government stealing from the donor account. The government in the country, I don't want to go back. I have a video recording in my possession, and you can even say go on the general news, on the BBC and all the news. Go read it. The government stole from the donor account. The donors are asking. The donors are holding from back because the government, the government mismanagement. Then you beside the twenty-five million. So you talking okay. about? I don't know what I'm talking about. How about the ambassador phone? The ambassador phone. The ambassador that caught him petition. The ambassador in the country. They caught him petition that the government stole him from from the uh, from the in, uh, the foreign account. For the ambassador account, the government should return that money. We have a video. Which you can go you do the talking, research. Are you talking about the foreign ambassadors? The foreign ambassador in the country. Yeah, but Mr. Bill, what you what, what, what we need to establish here, first of all, is the government mm -hmm. is the government. And foreign ambassadors accredited to these republics, they've got rules of engagement within where they operate. They cannot interfere in domestic yeah. affairs. They can't go on making statements of those nature. They can talk to the government and releases can yeah. be made. George Weir has got executive yeah. powers. He can expel an ambassador mm -hmm. or ask such ambassador to be recalled mm -hmm. if they are interfering in the internal affairs of the country. We just need to establish that. But we are fastly running out of time. I just want to address something quickly and then I give you the floor ask one or two questions and we round up this program. But trust me, we're going to come again, Mr. Doe. I can promise you this. We're going to come again and we're going to talk about the issues even more stronger than we've done today. Because today provides me with um, a bird's eye view 
as to what the community is looking for, what they want to hear, how they want to hear what they want to hear. And um, you as a social commentator as well. So Mr. Fred Kamara asks, so are you really sure, Mr. Krumer, that the George Weir is doing the right thing in Liberia as the president? And I'm sure that's addressed to me. So the simple answer is, um, George Weir is doing um, what he thinks he can do. It might not be right, and there is not, it's not right in everything. And let me tell you something personal about um, Mr. Weir. Let me tell you something personal, you know. Um, the president is my age group. The president comes at a time where I came from. The president was around when I was around. The president and myself played football. Um, the president um, was a man that I admired a lot. The president is a man was a man that I held in high esteem when he was playing football. Now he's in the political circles. But of course, in the political circles, just like in many other disciplines, you are not 100% right. What I knew of George Weir is 20 years ago, you could not compare a man that was known. I'm saying a man that was known because there will have been many unknowns. But a man that was known to be on the national scene who loved that country more than George Weir. Remember, don't get me wrong, I'm saying 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, George Weir. He deeply, deeply loved this country. I cannot speak for him now because it's political. And once it becomes politics, it becomes toxic because not everybody can agree with you. I cannot explain anything good he has done or no clue. That's George Weir. That's for Mr. Wiki Mawon Benito. And um, the final one, before I go back again to Mr. Doe, if yes, I may like you to analyze the good and bad issues going on in Liberia. Okay, Mr. Doe, um, um, what's his name? Mr. Kamara, Fred Kamara. Of course, um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a huge researcher. I read, I read a lot, and I'm not bragging about it. I'm talking about it. I'm just trying to say the question that you're asking, you know, you're like, you would like for me to analyze, which is my business. I'm an analyzer. I'm very, very analytical, which I can do, especially with George Weir. I can go back into his history. I've just said something about his history. So all I need to do is to juxtapose that with the present. And then that gives you a perfect analysis, which I think I can do any day. But thank you very much for that. But let me go back to my guest because he's been very patient, you know, here with me and um, the rest of the audience. But it's been a good interview so far and so good. And ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are just joining, I'm speaking to a very special guest from Canada. Um, and he's none other than Mr. Francis Doe. And this is the then and now. And today is the 27th of September, 2019. And we are talking about issues about establishing a criminal court. We've gone that far. So we need to come back. So Mr. Doe, what do you yeah. think the benefits of establishing a criminal court in Liberia will mean to the people of Liberia, and not only the people of Liberia, but also the wider um, um, area? I'm talking about specifically the Mano River Union. So two parts to the question. What it would be the significance of establishing this criminal law court? You know, yeah in the country, the Republic of Liberia, and what effect or the significance this will have in terms of the regional bodies in the, in the, in the area, which is Liberia and Guinea? Yeah, first of all, the benefit of the, the benefit, let me look at the benefit within the, the let me talk about the Mano River Union. The benefit, number one, the benefit will, it will stabilize it will stabilize the region, economic-wise, social-wise, yeah. yeah. security-wise, will stabilize the region. Two, they will, they will curtail, they will curtail the state looting in our country, in our country. Today, because if we have economic crime code today in our country, we won't be saying all this thing we're saying, we're not gonna be, I'm not gonna be saying all this thing I'm telling you today. Then as I'm yeah. talking, there will be an independent. Yep. Francis, go on, go on. 
there will be an independent, uh, independent commi uh, commission that carry on the investigation to get down to the bottom without the executive branch interfering. We want a, we want a judicial system that will, in, that will operate independently without the, the executive branch in, uh, interfering. Two, the, 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 four, the, the, how do you call it? The Mother River Union, the two countries, Serbia and Liberia, Serbia and Guinea, will learn something from Liberia because they will tap up, they will see the type of mission we're taking to fight crime, to fight economic crime, to make sure to stabilize because the economic crime will sell the self as a deterrent for anybody that get an intention to loot our country. We got a president, vice president, minister, lawmaker. Director, because the, the economic crack is, is a guardian for our economic system. So, looking at this, I think that the economic crack tend to benefit the country. They tell me why. When it comes to the country, it itself, itself as a deterrent. So, people don't just look at it to look at it. Oh, today, because the other guy did it before, we're going to go do it the next time. No. Okay. Um... That's fair enough. And you, you can still hear me, Mr. Mr. Do, can you? Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Um, Mr. Joseph Bindi, the 25 million US dollar was meant to stimulate the economy and the 16 billion was a local currency illegally missing from the Freeport of Monrovia. Mr. Bindi, thanks for that clarification. Marie Pade. My brother, there, Liberia, there for you, um, there for you, the people are sick. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sister Pade, thanks for that. Rita Teme, that is my Minister of Finance said, Vantagobility, due to financial indiscipline, we had excessive liquidity that posted adverse effect on our exchange rate. To curb this, the government decided to carry out mop-up exercise, that's to buy the extra Liberian dollar in the market, which was never traceable. Shadia Alima, I thought 25 billion, which is inflation. Bokari Sao, didn't Madam Salif son once serve as head of the central bank? That's kind of intriguing, Mr. Sao. And they helped to print excess currency that was not uh, appropriate. There are many contributions out there, there tonight. Um, back to my guest. Like I say, we are rounding up. We've got like about 10 minutes. So, um, Mr. Um, Doe, what would you really like to see? Because you're speaking from the perspective of a patriot, a man who loves his country dearly. People could feel this in your emotion. You, you know, yeah, you're very passionate about what you're saying in terms of corruption and how it should be dealt with. Earlier on, you talk about, you know, yeah, the police, for example, those that are supposed to be executing the law. The lawmakers are making fabulous money while those that are out there under the rain shine in ghettos West Point, Newcrotown, Lokington, Pinsville, you know, Dupo Road, and the rest of it, they are really struggling. The police does not even have logistics, no vehicles, no boots, no uniforms, and the rest of it. What would you really like to see for your country? Uh, what I would like to see, Mr. Mr. Kuman, what I would say may be a difficult stand that you don't want to hear, but this is my opinion, which is I, I'm fully uh, responsible for. I think, I think, for me, I think it's time for the president to leave. He cannot do the job. The president not up to the task. I think it's time for Joe to resign, or for the citizen to make him re retire. Because at this point of time, the country has a critical role. Economically, the Joe doesn't have an economic policy that will rebound the country. The country loses integrity. As the country loses integrity, our people are dying every day. As I'm sitting, I'm sitting in tears. So what I expect for Jovia to do to resign? We don't want Jovia. Jovia is not up to the time. He incapacitated to do the job. So I think he should leave. 
You don't have a technical know to move a country forward in that country losing integrity every day. The people are dying. As we're speaking today, no medication in the hospital. Almost some of those civil servants are go three, four months, they never get paid. Some of them are go ten months, they never get paid. And the government, there's no way that the way government can actually pay by those people. I think we should just call that a loss in the 25 million, the 16 billion. So we have to leave. That we have somebody credible that will come and establish the economic crankle, the war and economic crankle, that we're going to build a new Liberia. But I think for now, Joe, is incapacitated. The way he started the government, the government is not a government that will run the country affair at this point of time. Because Joe doesn't have a policy, Joe doesn't have a technical noir to move the country forward, looking at the, the corruption, looking at all this kind of around the government. At this point of time, our country depends foreign aid and all the corruption with all kind of around the government that also put our people into predicament for the people to suffer so at this point of time we ask the government to resign so we can bring a new government we have we can bring a new government that will bring that will bring sanity and bring credibility to the country we don't want to deal with a government i take 25 million to nickel town 16 billion missing the donors are asking for their money. The government, there was a certain incident again. There were housing business, people from the housing authority, the national, the national housing authority. There was certain money scandal that the president aid, the aid from the president office was involved. The guy actually called the president aid, the man that next to the president. He said he was sharing his money. The even said called, they were recording all. So at the point of time, I think before it gets too late, before our people go back to conflict, I think you have to resign. That's what I think that would be the best forward for our country. Because the, the system is not a problem. The people that the president ahead of the system is a problem. Yeah, but Mr. 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 Doe, looking at the system, you know, yeah, you say the system is not a problem. I'm not sure how many people will agree with that. That is the head which is the problem. Um are you really convinced that if Mr. Weir was to step down today? that the situation in Liberia will improve, that it will change for the better? Yeah. Yeah. Even though, even though, even though the yeah. system remains the same, because what has consistently happened is in government, the structure remains the same. And this is what we need to understand. The structure remains the same. Governments come and go, but the structure is there. And especially the heads. The heads leave, a different head come, but the system remains the same. You've got the same... Uh, uh, um, uh, government officials in terms of um, civil servants and the rest of it, and yet still the government does not make any gains. Are you convinced again, I'm going to ask you this, my brother, that should George Weir, the president of the Republic, I think he's presently in the Marriott Hotel in New York attending the UNGA. If he were to resign today, you think the situation in the country will change for the better? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me just um, give you my last one or two questions. Uh, but before I do so, I just want to go to Mr. Fred Kamara. Mr. Fred, I mean, uh, of course, normally we don't pay attention to this because I think Mr. Bokarisa or another guest has addressed this. Um, you spent all this time here and then you end up with that. You need to think about that. I'll leave you with that. Okay. Um, Mr. Um, Doe, establishing the criminal court, how optimistic are you that this will happen? Or in other words, do you think this will ever happen? Because the players, let me help with that. The players are the same. And these are the people that are meant, you know, yeah, to make this happen. But if the players are the same, they are the corrupt officials. Do you ever think that they will endure something like a criminal court, which effectually we have them indicted? Uh, first of all, the new government, that's why we're asking Georgia to leave. There's a reason, not because only the 25 million. The new government are going old government. People that work in the government for a long time, serving the government is an opportunity. We will retire most of those guys and put them on subject them to an investigation. If you have a clean record, of course, you can get a job with the government. 
if you have a clean record, you can. Yeah, but Mister Doe, Mister Doe, I hate to interject. interject. I hate to interject, interject when you in full flow, but I, I I I like to be realistic. So yes, you've got a point there that we will have to put these people on trial. Like if you've got a clean record. But in the meantime, understanding our societies, our structures, when you are putting those people on the trial, who then eventually acts in their place? If you understand what I mean, understanding our structure, because it seems like um, everybody is yeah. in the same kind of thing. So who do you put in place? No, Mr. Kroman, that's why you have to your government to go. So an uh, independent person, a neutral person can establish a code. Because when the neutral person has established a code, you will bring a new thing. Then the thing will go after those people. But no, we're not asking name for me, the present government. Because the present government... Name me one neutral person. It's like the biblical quotation. He who will first cast the stone, you know, yeah, who feel like you clean, if you feel like you clean. And I'm sure you know the Bible quotation. Let them cast the first stone. So show me that person that will cast the first okay. stone. Me, in if, our I was to put my, if I were to put my hand on chopping bowl to say, because I'm a patriot, I stand for patriot, right? You see, there's a guy yeah. called Ephraim Dara Delon. Yeah, Ephraim Dara <laughs> Delon for our country. I think if you heard us. If you heard about him, you can see the picture. I'm, I'm trying to get him on this program. Yes, I know about him. I know before he became a senator, I, I, I had contacts with him, his contacts in America, and I'm still trying to get him on this program, and hopefully we'll get him soon. Yeah. Okay. I will provide a Ephraim Dara Delon. Ephraim Dara Delon. Uh, Honorable just Ambassador Joseph Yuma Boakai. We, Are they really? gonna be coming? Okay. Yeah. Are they gonna yeah, be go coming? Yeah. Are they gonna be coming? No one can yeah. come on a platform and tell me Are they gonna be coming in going to any scandal or any corruption activity? Everything I have, he lived for it. And you can see the picture within this man. This man spending his own his earning. To help a society, he's just an individual. The masses, the vast majority, could not feel the impact because it's a decision that he made for a community decision. That's say if you go and build a school, a coming go and build a school in a community. Only that community that is a decision that our community will benefit, right? That's the community. Until we give him the, the manual to see how a judgment will execute the overall performance. Second. The third person will be that's a guy that can speak, Henry Costa. I think if you heard about Henry Costa. Yeah. He's a patron. I'm not telling you Henry Costa will be a president. Let me stop you right there. Let me stop, let me stop you right there and ask you when you say somebody is a patriot, you've named a few of them. Alexander B. Cummings, Joseph Wakai, Mr. Dillon, and Henry Costa in the end. When you say people of this nature are, you know, yeah, are patriots, what exactly do you mean? What is a, who is a patriot? Okay. A patriot is a guy that something that belongs to the country. What belongs to you? A patriot is somebody that truthful to the nation, truthful to itself, and he stands as okay. truthful to outside. Okay, so we will, take that, we, will, we will take that. We will take Mr. O, Mr. Doe. We will take that definition because it sounds really appropriate. But will you say Mr. Joseph Buakai is a patriot? Yeah, he's a patriot. Okay, according to you, he's a patriot. And Mr. Dillon, yeah. who is demanding, you know, no less than five thousand dollars a salary or whatever, and um, is a patriot yeah. as well. Okay, yeah. and um, and the rest of them, Alexander Cummings and Mr. Costa, they are all patriots. And you would like to see yeah. people like this needing a Liberian government other than the present core of officials. Yeah. So um, yeah. quickly, you know, yeah, we're coming to an end. So I like the way you're answering the questions, you know, yeah, very quickly. So Mr. Joseph Buakai, who served, I believe, 12 years under Madame Ellen Johnson Salif. And Madame Ellen Johnson Salif's government 
is believed to have been very, very corrupt. Would you agree with that? Was Madam Ellen Johnson Sirleaf's government corrupt? Yeah. The question here is, who was her deputy? Uh, the bar uh, Joseph Boakai. Joseph Boakai. And this man, Joseph Boakai, yeah. happens to be one of the people that you've just endorsed and clearly say that he's a patriot. Yeah. So how will a man who served 12 years under a corrupt regime be patriot? A patriot. Okay, thank you. When I mean by Joseph Bakai patriot, patriot into, into a so many categories, right? I mean one of the categories. The peace and stability we enjoy in the country today was because of Joseph Yuma Bakai. Because in, in Africa, it's not easy that a ruling party will just turn over power to a, a, a opposition party without no problem. This is the first country that the ruling party, the, the, the standard bearer of the ruling party that you could accuse of corruption. Let's say, for example, if Manasari government were corrupt, the job are working the government of Manasari. Yes. If we're talking about Joseph Baker being a patriot, do we work as a senator? Did he ever tell the Liberian people how much money you were making as a senator? You're moving to a different territory now. That would be a different question. My question was, you said that Mr. Joseph Wakai, the man who served as the number two in a government, which you agree was corrupt, he served for 12 years. Yet you said he was a patriot. Yeah. But let me move to a, let me move to another let me move to another man. Let me move to another man. Mr. Henry Costa. Mr. Is Mr. You... Kuma, Mr. Kuma, before Mr. Kuma, before you move yep. on, Joseph Barker work in the government and Joe Wea work in the government. So both of them work in the government. Joe Wea was a peace ambassador in the same government. I get five million dollars without accountability. Joseph Barker was a vice president. So there was something Joe Wea was a senator. George Wea was, was, was not a, we were, George Wea, yeah. Mr. George Wea, Mr. Doe. The time span yeah. that you were talking about, Mr. George Weir, was not a government official. I think we are conflicting a couple of issues here. And some of the accusations that you But there were to him. There were four given said, to him, five million dollars for him to carry on peace process in the country without accountability. The government was to ask him. That, there was that, that, no, no, we, we have to spell out the differences. Of funds were given to him. How does that make him a government official because of funds were given to him? No. No. So I'm not saying, I'm not, uh, Mr. Kuma. Mr. Kuma. Yeah. Let me bring yeah. you what I'm saying is like when I mean Jogwa working in the government, Jogwa was a senator. We're coming towards the end of the program, and really we've, we had about five more minutes and we've lost our guest. But the point I was trying to make is rather than casting aspersions all over the place, I think we should have the humble duty of accepting things as they are. I think we will have few people who want to talk. Let me see if I can bring Wiki Mawon Benito and Brother Amos Gamu Gomuyo wants to talk. Let's bring Brother Benito in first. Let's see whether we can bring him in. And um, the point I was trying to make is like, um, instead of casting aspersions, you have to come up with facts. If you don't have facts, then you have to know how to table the discussion other than pointing fingers and say exactly this is what it is. Because it's not what it is. It's not, really. So I will give you a minute or two so that you can appear on the program. You have to keep your phone or your gadget, whatever you're watching from, in a landscape position. In other words, Make sure that your phone is in this position. This is what I call a landscape position, okay? Horizontal. It has to be horizontal. If it's not, you're not going to connect to the program. And if you haven't done that and you want to partake, you need to come up and send your invitations. And this is it. Mr. Kroma, please tell me who you are. <laughs> Um, Madam Ethel Innes, my name is Prince Kromer. I'm a social media commentator. I'm a philanthropist. I'm an activist. And um, I just love talking. And I've got this platform, a program called Then and Now. 
and not talk about issues. It's not particularly on a particular specific subject matter. It's general. So we talk basically about everything. And it's not dedicated to one country. It's dedicated to international relations dedicated to all. So I've got like um, five more minutes, four more minutes. And I'm going to close the program. So I'll find you with a brother. Did I pronounce your name right, sir? Yeah, thank you. Thank you well, for that pronunciation. No worries at all. If you can introduce yourself quickly, we haven't got much time, but I'm sure you want to make a contribution. So quickly, your name yeah. and where you're calling from, please. Uh, I'm Amos Gomi. You're calling from New Jersey. New Jersey, New Jersey. Uh, brother Amos Gomi. What have you got to say, Mr. Gomi? Right. Uh, you know, I, I followed your program just a minute ago. Um, we are talking, I, I heard you people talking about who is credible to to take over a, even Joe, we are having to leave. Am I correct? Um, yes, but that was not a subject matter, but we, eventually that's where we came to and we're coming to the conclusion of the show. But the issue here was or okay. is we were talking about the setting up of a criminal court in Liberia, okay? And uh, whether George Weir will endorse that, which it appears like he's endorsed that, but my guest that I had, Mr. Francis Doe, does not believe that the president did endorse that. So we were just discussing from one issue to the other. And uh, part of what he was saying, along with other guests on or in the chat room, mm -hmm. is like um, eventually have to go. The question was if Mr. Webb goes, who replaces the system? Will they be okay? And I guess he was saying yes, and he was giving me room for people who could constantly be Oh, okay. Um, I, I agree with uh, Mr. Doe concerning about the World Crown could be um, signed by Joe Weir. Well, we say that in it because we're hearing a he signed it, but we said that in it. It, it, was, it was just a, a letter sent to the, to the uh, senator, to the legislature, for them to view it and sign it. He, he asked them, but he has not signed it, not come out to sign him. That's why we heard. But, but me, I doubt in it that he going to sign a work record. And the second thing is, I want to talk about uh, credible people. Uh, I, I heard you people naming one or two people. Uh, uh, people uh, Joseph Bwakai, uh, Henry Costa, uh, Dara Dillon, and Dallas, uh, Alexander Kume. Yeah. If we look at, uh, let me just go directly to Joseph Bwakai. And yeah. uh, you asked a question to, uh, to Mr. Doe concerning uh, the, the, the ruling, the, the lay ruling party of Ellis Sally Johnson. And we all know that Ellis Sally Johnson government failed massively because they were corrupt. And, and, and we are finding in Ellen government who are the vice president credible. Credible, if anything happened as a uh, Joe, we are, we, are, we are forcing him to the war and we are saying that he must step down. And we want him to step down. When, we, when he step down, those people that we need, we want him to be, because we are seeing their credibility, we, we see it uh, proving. Because we, you drop to the barrel. And the Bible clearly stated that you must bear a good fruit. Every tree they will know you by your fruit. By yep. your fruit, we shall know them. Yep. That's what the Bible said in the book of Matthew. By the fruit, we shall know them. So the fruit that Joseph Walker showed to us, and we know clearly, we know we were not, we are not, we are not baby in, in Liberia. Liberia as the vice president of Joseph Waka, he was suppressed. Joseph Waka couldn't make decisions on the early left government, although he was a vice president. But now one day, he was given a chance to make a decision, and he was always suppressed. That's the same thing that's going on with, with uh, uh, Joel Howard Taylor. Joel Howard Taylor... She just there, the name is just there, a bad person. She can't move. Just imagine, uh, she didn't have a convo now. And she can't talk, she can't, say, she can't go through it too much. She can't say, she can't complain about it. The president will charge her and what, what's what happened. So that's what happened to Joseph Bwakai. But when we look at Joseph Bwakai, Joseph Bwakai is a straightforward man. Alessina Kome is good. 
Herman P. Costa is good a young man are coming on determined and fair to the Liberian people. And we're seeing the fruit of, 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 of Dara Delon. So when you talk about credible people, how can we find a credible people in Liberia? So we show you the example of the people who we, 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 we hold them now as a credible people of, of, of the land. So, you know, I just, I just got in the show. So I want to make that clear. So Joseph Bakai, Joseph Bakai is a, is a man with clean hands. But he worked in the alien government, a government that was corrupt. That's the question he gave the door. And, 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 and he was not having a chance to, to make a view, a make a point. Even to inject the idea within the government, the president was not giving a, a, a boss, was not giving the, him the chance. So how can you exercise your, 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 your... Okay, Amos, uh, Amos, what, Amos, what? Amos, yeah. Amos, yeah. Mr. Gomoyo, I mean, so you're, 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 you seem to be endorsing Mr. Um, um, Joseph Wakai. But um, yes, you could be in a government and you're not giving the free reins to exercise yourself. But how would you right. e excuse a man who sat in a government for 12 years? Mm -hmm. 12 years, Mr. Gomuyo. How can you justify that, please? Yeah, I can justify it by, the, uh, uh, by that move. You know, somebody can... Look, look, let me tell you. How would, would we know that uh, 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 this woman... Uh, 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 Joel Howard Taylor is a good woman. She got a heart for the country. How will we know? Now, she's not exercising nothing. She can't exercise nothing. She's not given a chance, you know, to exercise her, her, her right or idea to the Liberian people. So you can't, you, you, although she's working on a government that corrupt, a Joel government is the, the, the most western corrupt government in the whole republic and has damaged the country. And you know that the record is there. We are seeing the hospitals are closed and what have you. But if 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 uh 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 Joel Howard come, she want to make she I know she have a she have a dream. That lady have a dream as Joseph Walker. Joseph Walker, Joseph Walker was having a dream, but she was not he was not given a chance. So how will you include him in the although he work in the government, but he he so, I was looking so, at him. So so, yeah. Imos, brother yeah. Imos, so you uh -huh. are saying that Joseph Buakai had a dream, but for 12 years he sat on his dream in a government waiting, hoping for his time. Because you were not given a chance. And he was never because you were not given a chance. Yeah, hang on, hang on one minute. I'm trying to make a point here, uh, Mr. Mr. Gomez. Right. And, um, and he wasn't given a chance, and he's lost that chance because he's an old man. Right. He's not coming back. And... Um, Madam um, Joel Howard Taylor is now the number two to George Weir, and she's yeah. experiencing the same thing. You know, that you're saying, yeah, it. same thing. Doesn't she have right. a choice? Doesn't she have a choice? You know, to leave. Is she tied to the government of George Weir? Can't she leave if things are not going like you're saying? Before she become another Joseph. Oh, not yet. When... No, she will be charged. Well, she will be charged. Once she leaves, when, when she leaves, when she says she's leaving the government, she can be charged because there are so many things at, uh, at the government, the, 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 the boss that we, uh, uh, we are saying that the woman undermining, trying to undermine him, the woman undermining the government. There's a woman coming, you know, to try to put, he tried to uh, 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 indict her some kind of way. She try, he trying to indict the woman. So, at that stage, the woman had to, you got to work, you got to work in wisdom when you're working with uh, wicked leaders. So she had to work in wisdom. If you just go there and say you resign, the reason why you resign, whatsoever he's saying, you know, the man, the man mind is uh, already been set up. Uh, he's he trying to find, he, he already found a, a, a point that to, to include, to indict the woman, even to, to charge her for treason or, uh, and so so the woman, he, he says she's having to leave. Definitely, yeah. what he's saying, everybody yeah. will, will conclude. He said, well, George, we are right. So the, the woman walking in Western, he, he, she didn't have, have to resign. She so, didn't have to resign. But we all know the, the, the game are playing. We so know to, the game are playing. Mr. Mr., yeah. Mr. Gomuyo, um, two quick questions um, for you. Obviously, yeah. Joelle has a right, you know, yeah, yeah, she's the number two woman and she's a very powerful woman. She can leave if she wants to. She's not tied to it. 
she is of her own. Or, you better uh, be careful. In a, in, well, in this kind of government we run in careful. Africa. That does not mean that you are not tied. You better be careful. Because when she, when she having a leave, when she having a leave, whatsoever they are saying with her name, whatsoever they want to include her, to, then it will be, it will, it will come, it will, it will come reality. They will say, yeah, we were saying that. You see how the woman resigned. We were saying that. It's yeah. true. Then at that point, when she resigned, there's no movement. Even she having to go in the market, they will arrest her. Okay, 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 okay. You are right. <laughs> okay, Mr. Gomuyo. Um, do you understand the president's pro poor policy? I was going to ask Mr. Do this to cap uh, to close the program. Unfortunately, we lost him. Do you understand the president's pro poor policy? Do you understand it? Really, really. Uh, this pro poor, so called pro poor, according to him, I don't understand nothing about his pro poor. I don't understand nothing about because. You say one thing here, tomorrow you say another thing. What you say, we're not seeing it happening. You say proper, I, I, I don't understand. I don't understand his proper government. I don't know. I don't okay. understand it. Uh, okay. So if you don't understand, you know, you're like a major policy of the president, and then you come on live air, and you try to disparage the president of the republic, even though he might have faults of his own because he's human, then... How much do you think you are right in terms of what you're saying about the president if you don't understand one major policy, which is of this president, the current president of Liberia? No, but the policy, the, when you talk about it, I, you mm -hmm. telling me, you asking me what I know about, him, about the president of a pro, pro government. Is, is that a question, right? Yeah, that was a question. You've answered it, but you said you don't really know, and that's a major policy of the George We are the government. government when the government yeah when the government coming into power they have their plan what they're going to do what they're going to how they're going to work so they, they name it they they gave they gave it a name of, of what they're going to do so they say this is the proper government the proper government they have that they, they had a step how they want to do things how they want to move the country and what have you but if if you go into the the presidency how president you know how the president to behave and what have you, the, the many of the president, what the president have to do, what the president is supposed to do, the many of the president, we all know about it. We all know the position, what, when, when you are a president, we, we, we know your position, we know what, what you, 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 you're you supposed to do. But you have your plan, you have your own mechanism in oh, your mind. One in final, government. One final say, question, yeah, we have to do. Mr. Gomuyo, one final question, please. Right. How hopeful are you for your country, Liberia? Are you optimistic? That Liberia will overcome. Do you see the presidency of Georgia turning things around? Overall, what's your take? What's your opinion? Do you think Liberia is going to overcome? Yeah, uh, that, that's our prayer. Uh, I, I believe that one day the, the uh, Liberia will resurrect. And when Liberia will resurrect, I don't believe that under the administration, Liberia will resurrect because the, the way thing is is unfolding. Okay. I believe, I do believe that Liberia will resurrect. I All do right. believe that Liberia will resurrect. On that yeah. note, but on that, that note, that, that is, that's not under the administration. I don't believe that under the administration, thing will be right. Because if, 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 if you are going to give out a clear picture that on the administration, Liberia will take another trend and Liberia will turn around or Liberia will be better. We want to know, we're going to know from the beginning, from this beginning. We want to know how you will relate to things. But at this point, at that point, because a lot of chance have been given him. A lot okay. of things he talks okay, about. Mr. Mr. Gomo, you we've run out of time. Yeah. Unfortunately, we have to leave thank you here as we as we as we are. And I want to say thank you uh, very, very much. It's on a high note. The brother is optimistic, although thank he you. doesn't believe that it's going to happen under um, President. Thank um, you very much. We are. Thank you very much, Mr. Gomoyu, for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I want to say um, uh, thank you to Sister Ethel Innes, Sister Emilia Kumba, Kenya Lawson, and um, Mr. Twi Wai. And Shadia has been very, very active on the forum, which I um, appreciate very much because I took a couple of leads from what you were saying, and that helped me, you know, yeah, to go along. Um, on this note, I just want to say goodbye. It's been a good run through. 
And um, unfortunately, we never had Mr. Doe to end his program, which I was going to end on the pro poor George Weir um, program. But on this note, we have to go because we spent over two and a half hours. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. We're back on Sunday. We've got Brian Matobo of ADP and Kamarimba. Please don't forget to tune in. Yeah? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in today, September 27, 2019. I've been your host and presenter with my very special guest, Mr. Francis Doe, and a few other contributors calling from Philadelphia, Belgium, New Jersey, and you name it. Please come again because we're going to be on. This story is not going to go away anytime soon. Thank you and good night.